comments for items not on the agenda? Okay, additions or changes to the agenda? Okay, I think it would be helpful if we went around the room and I'll start and do some introductions, especially so Katie can get your name for the minutes. Denise Wheeler, Select Board. Jim Barlow, uh, Callis Town Attorney. Cliff Emmons, Callis Select Board. Rose Pelchuk, Callis Select Board. Katie Lane Kearns, the Recording Secretary. John Brabant, Callis Select Board. Sharon Wynn Fannin, Callis Select Board. Wilson Hughes, uh, Animal Control Officer, Town Council, Lister. <laughs> uh, Evan Henschel, just watching. I'm sorry, could you say your name again? Uh, Evan Henschel. He's with Orca. Oh, okay. Uh, Judy Fitch Robert, I'm Town Clerk. Janet Ansel, stay back. Chris Martin, uh, Marshfield Select Board. Bobby Brimblecom, Marshfield Town Clerk. Nice to meet you folks. Thanks for coming. Do you know if anybody else is coming? From Marshfield? From Marshfield, do you have an animal control officer? Uh, I don't believe the animal control officer is coming. I didn't, I didn't hear from the animal control mm -hmm. officer. I did send the notice, but yeah, thank you. it was pretty late when I sent it yeah. late in the day, and I don't, my office is not open today, so I don't know. Oh, you're not open on Monday. Oh, no, okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, um, just to kind of start off a little bit, we have a situation in Callis with some horses that are perpetually roaming loose. They don't have any... Um, what is that thing called? Halter, halters or any way to contain them. They just roam around loose. They end up on other people's properties. Um, destroy gardens, snaffle fences. Um, sometimes they're in the road and there's been several instances where there's been almost a tragedy. With either somebody hitting the horses, presumably they would get hurt, or somebody getting killed. Um, and this has been a perpetual problem in Callis every year for several years now. The um, neighbors um, file complaints. It takes up a lot of the town office time fielding the complaints. And then we have um, Wilson Hughes and Elizabeth, who is another the second animal control officer. They've spent time checking on the horses. There doesn't appear to be like neglect in the sense that they're not being fed or watered or I guess they have some minimal well, coverage. One, although one, at least one had a contagious disease. Yeah, strangles. And one had a, uh, last year had a... Right. A dial stuck in its yeah. chest. But apparently those issues cleared up. She took care of the horses. For a while the horses were in another location while she was... Um, in away. another location. In, right. She, while she was away and then the horses came back. Um, yeah, pretty much things to do with this is pretty much not to do with like dogs and cats. That's pretty well under control. This is more livestock. I understand Marshfield has roaming cows. <laughs> yeah, we have roaming cows. <laughs> right. <laughs> Free so, range. So, you know, it just seems that it just keeps going around and around. Um, we've talked to our town attorney. We've talked to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. The statutes are really old. Um, and it says any person can impound an animal, a horse that runs at large. But who's really gonna do that? How many people are really gonna try to catch somebody's horse and impound it, they can charge a fine? And for Janet, it looks like we need to have some different legislation. I'm not sure what that is. So this is really kind of a, let's put our heads together. How can we come up with some ideas? How can Janet help us with some legislation, hopefully next year? It's kind of like a brainstorming session. Um, so I don't know if you want to... Kevin. Chris might want to share Marshfield's experience yeah. with cattle along Route 2 as well. Um, we have the same situation. Uh, we have a property owner who has, now he has um, close to 20 animals. Very large, the size is probably larger than the horses that you are having trouble their with cows their cows and um, we've been dealing with this particular individual for about 30 years we have a file in the town clerk's office we've been dealing with the same issues 
takes up a lot of the town clerk's time, takes mm -hmm. up a lot of the animal control officer's time, and the select board's time right. over the years. Right. Some years have been better, or uh, I say better, some years have been less of a problem than other years. Mm -hmm. uh, some years we may not have a problem. Um, but this year in particular has been uh, quite problematic. Uh, the animals actually, some of the animals get into Route 2, um, and most of them have been roaming at large on um, probably at least a half a dozen other property owners' properties mm -hmm. um, doing damage. Um, uh, this year? This well. year alone, yep. and in previous years. Yep. Uh, we've gone through the fence viewers, had fen fence viewers, I think it was two years ago maybe, had the fence viewers um, to visit the property, uh, and they went through the process that is laid out for fence viewers. Um, uh, we've talked to the state police. The, honestly, the state police don't seem to have the time or the willingness or the authority. I'm not certain think, that they I even think have it's the all of the above because we've involved them as well. Right. Um, uh, to, to work with us um, and there are some provisions under title 20 but we're it hasn't been clear to us the in the town mm -hmm. uh, who actually is able to enforce title 20 um, there are s some different parts of that statute that uh, also relate to this um, and Jim may be able to shed some light on that, it's my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that if the animals are on somebody else's property, there's little to nothing the town can really do. It's when they're on, like the town roads. When she had her wagon, for instance, parked on one of our town roads, she can't park the wagon in the town right of way or have her horses feeding in the town right of way. They shouldn't be roaming in the town right of way, but I don't think that there's much you can do when it's on some private individual's property, it then becomes comes up to them to file a civil action. Exactly. And people don't want to do that because it's expensive. Right. And and that's the, the exact issue I think we've been uh, dealing with. Mm -hmm. People just don't want to go through that whole right. headache. Right. Um, although this year it got to the point where I think a couple of the property owners were almost to that point where they we're almost willing to go that route, mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, uh, uh, as well as some, they they got as far as these animals actually were roaming at certain times on town roads uh, on occasion. Not they weren't there a lot, mm -hmm. um, but you know they'd cross the road or they might be on the edge of the road. But they were along Route 2. And Route 2 is a state highway. Yes. And the Vermont State Police didn't have an issue with them being on the... They they did stop and they chatted with the, the individual. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, it, it didn't really solve the problem at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like the last three weeks, two to three weeks, the problem has gotten better. Yeah, they seem to go in. Yeah. At least here it does. Yeah. These um, beef or dairy cattle? They're cattle. beef cattle, and they're they're large animals. The mm -hmm. bulls, he has uh, several bulls. One of the bulls is probably well over a ton. Uh, so if, if he was on Route 2 and somebody hit that animal, yeah. it would be... Tragic. Yeah. They seem to be out mostly at night. Yeah. So it's even more dangerous. Oh, for yeah. Yeah. Are they and black cows? No, they're they're light colored. That's but good. <laughs> that helps we, a but bit. still, we did try talking to the Department of Agriculture yeah. about neglect, but if you look at them, they don't appear to be. Right. We, I think well Wilson. Are the same now you, Wilson, you contacted Agri. Agriculture on many occasions, and uh, all they're concerned about is food, shelter, and water. That's it. These, these cattle are very well fed. They're yeah. just yeah, they're eating other people's fed off into everybody <laughs> else's property. <laughs> so, 
the basic the basic system that's in place in Vermont under the law is the same system that's been in place since the early 1800s. And it all made sense when everyone as a farmer could deal with their neighbor's cattle getting onto their property. But basically everybody in the right has the authority to impound a beast, whether it's a cattle, horse, swine, um, they can take that animal and impound it or bring it to the pound keeper, okay? Then you give notice to the owner. The owner then uh, comes forward. They assess the damage that was done by the beast that were roaming at large. Um, it's, that assessment is made by three, uh, uh, three non-interested individuals. Um, they set how much damage has to be paid to release the animals from impoundment, and then there is a fine that can be paid, which is not more than $10 and not less than three. And so upon the payment of the damages and the fine, the animals get released back to the owner. But of course today, who can, who can round up a barn. The, the, right, who has a barn? Right. Who can round up the cattle? Who can round up the horses? Who's got a trailer to transport them? Who's got a pound to keep them in? Um, it just, and for all of that effort, it's all just basically a big liability for the town. Correct. Right? Um, in Callis's situation, with horses, I, I mean, I don't know, typically the hor a horse tends to be a little easier to, to handle and mm -hmm. approach. Usually. Uh, she has a new horse that's a stallion, I believe. Oh. There's also a draft horse that's a little bit bigger than that. Okay. Well, there are some statutes under Title 20 about stallions, bulls, and rams as well. Right. And yes. the fines are larger. Yeah, stallions for, go from 100 to 500. Right. Yeah, this says Section 3349 stallion. Yeah. But, but who has the authority to assess that fine? Right. How do you collect them? Right. Well, that's the big thing. You can have all the enforcement that you want, but how do you collect it? Yeah. And how do you enforce it? Yeah. That's right. a huge issue. Right. It goes to a civil court. I'm a municipal officer, if you remember, 864. I can write a civil summons, but you know, they show up in court, and then whether the court decides to pursue it, right. doesn't happen. So can you write a ticket under the state statute? Yes. Thank you. So under Title 20, which I think stallions, bulls, and and I think livestock running at large is actually under Title 28 as well. Yeah, but there's a special, it's, it's, it's um, um, cattle, horses, or swine are horses. three to 10. Sheep and goats. But a stallion is 100 to 500. Because right. right. we didn't want the stallion running around impregnating the mares in town. Right. Right? Well, and they're it's also nasty. Yeah, yeah they, they're also, <laughs> stallions, bulls, and rams are, uh, a lot uh, less predictable. They can be, yeah. They can be. They can be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, and this this statute is so old that you can charge five dollars for each week. <laughs> <laughs> and the other the other part of your the the what I see with you guys <clears throat> your problem or your issue, um, if you found somebody who is good with horses who knows horses. Um, I, and I don't know if you they could be a assistant to the animal control I'm officer. Both know horses. Elizabeth's good with horses. Um, I've been around horses all my life. Yeah, and um, and if somebody has a trailer, I mean you can you can sort of bump the the cost of dealing with this for the owner up um, <coughs> because it's going to cost a certain amount to have a trailer and a truck come pick an animal up and find an impoundment out of town so it's further away, it's more problematic to get the animals back, then maybe they'll start taking the problem more seriously. Well, we, we thought um, when she was out of town for a while and they were at a different location, that they were going to stay there. stay there. And then they didn't. Mm -hmm. They came back. So, and I, yeah, because part of this says cattle, horses, or swine who run, run at large on highways or commons, any person may impound them. Most people don't have the, the equipment or, or the yeah. knowledge to impound an animal. I mean, this stuff is so old. One of these is 1950, 1959, and you said 
So it goes back to 18 something? Oh, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah. this is all. And, and then the cool. folks who do the impounding are responsible to it's the proper it's care of care. Yeah. Right. <coughs> the horse or cattle owner could it's call the AAFM in, and that person would get in trouble. Yeah. They're not providing appropriate care, right. which is expensive. Right. Or if something happened in their care, right. they yeah. would be yeah. held responsible. Right. Um, so our problem's a little different only in the sense that we can't even impound these cattle. Uh, the cattle are essentially, when they're off his property, they're wild. Um, oh, so you could impound them, but you really can't because of the... We, the, the yeah. Um, it, Chris has tried to catch them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you bring a lasso? Uh, no, I mean, okay. we, have, we have animals ourselves, so mm -hmm. I actually tried to um, get them to follow me into our fences where I could enclose them, mm -hmm. um, but they they, uh, they ran right through they, the, through they ran right through my fences. Whoa. Uh, wow. So, so um, we need the we need the cowboy division yeah. of Vermont State Police. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hmm. Texas Rangers. Jim, can you speak a little bit to the the public nuisance in twenty four VSA? I mean, and how that does or does not intertwine with the towns or anybody's authority relating to animals? Sure. We One option that would be available to the town is to define horses and cows and animals running at large as a public nuisance and to adopt an ordinance That's what we talked about. under that authority um, and then set out essentially a, you know, a penalty, a, a remedial, rem, whatever remedial steps might be, you know, needed to uh, address the problem um, just in the same same general way that you would adopt an ordinance to address other problems under are we limited on penalties to those set out in the state statute or can the we maximum if the maximum is eight hundred dollars per day so, right per day the yes. per, 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 animal? Right. per animal per animal or per well, I mean, you could try <laughs> yeah you know you know it did uh, the judge, so no matter how you do it, the first it's going to be the first time that the judge has ever seen an eight hundred dollar fine for a cow running the farm. Yeah. Well, and the trouble with ordinances, and we have this with other ordinances, they're only as good as the paper they're written on. And trying to enforce an ordinance for a town is really hard to do mm -hmm. because everybody's a volunteer. Um, it's just it's really really hard to, to do an ordinance. We've talked we talked about an ordinance. Do you have an ordinance? No. no, and we we've, we've talked about the same thing. Uh, we we were talking, we were looking at a livestock like a, a animal control ordinance, like for pets. Uh, we were looking to go that route, mm -hmm. but um, it sort of we were sort of steered. We've been steered away from that, and, and we're looking more at the public nuisance uh, avenue as well mm -hmm. uh, as an ordinance, but. Same issue. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had a lot of luck enforcing the ordinances that we have. Yeah, it's, same here. it's <laughs> always a part of enforcing the ordinances. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Sarah Sparkle from the Doyle House. Oh, okay, I you're here for Scott. Was yeah, Scott? I just okay. sometime you're gonna get into the traffic uh, discussion. Right, we're talking about horses right now. <laughs> That's much, much more fun. Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, can I jump in for a sure. They, um, I had, <coughs> excuse me, met with the Marshfield Select Board. I'm losing my voice. Uh -oh. <coughs> a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, I think yeah. it was. And I came came up with the emails that had gone back and forth between Chris and me. I got, I got them here for what they're worth. But um, I had asked legislative councils to do some research on the issue. I have the email that sets all that out. And I, I, um, I think part of what happened is that um, I wasn't clear what Marshfield wanted. Um, and the other issue is that because of the drafting deadline, I got to a place where I couldn't do any of it anyway. That's going to happen again at some point mm -hmm. this year, so it's good that we're having that discussion. Well, that's why I wanted to have it now. No, so I think it's great. Time um, too, and our deadlines months. are getting pushed up, so we're actually going to have even less time this year than really? we used to have. I think it's going to be some time. And I would imagine Callis and Marshfield are not the only towns that you have know, this issue. Probably you're right, but one of the things that uh, I don't know if you remember this, Chris, but when um, Michael Grady at Legislative Council did some research, I'm happy to share it with you. It's not any. 
similar to what you've seen here. Mm -hmm. um, he did also look at what some other states are doing. Um, but one of the things he threw out in one of those emails was that the Farm Bureau, he thought, was going to be pursuing legislation which would uh, immunize owners of livestock for the damage that they cause. Oh my um, and I don't, I, I say that, no, I, I don't believe they introduced it. Um, and it's, you know, it was Mike's best guess, but it came out of a situation in Rockland. The Killington thing. Yeah. Killington, right. yeah, exactly. Um, so I only mention that because, just to say that these things are not necessarily a slam dunk. Um, mm -hmm. That you've got interests on the other side that you need to think right. about. It usually takes several years to get something. It does, and yeah. this would be a, because these statues are so old, it would mm -hmm. be a fairly significant uh, change and you know, people are used to what's in place for better or for worse, mm -hmm. and I agree that there are probably other towns with problems. Um, but, um, you know, it, it will be, it'll be really important for both towns to um, be clear about what it is you want. I'm happy to do it, mm -hmm. but I don't know enough about the law in this area to know what the solution is. Mm -hmm. um, so I, um, yeah. I mean, it would, be, it would be, it would be, as well. <coughs> I think if the Vermont State Police showed up at these folks' houses, as you said they did, I don't know if they ever showed up at our person's house. Right, there's not enough of them. Right, there's not enough of them. The state, and they've got bigger things to tackle. Right. Until something happens. Until something, something happens. happens. And then they would respond to Right, it. yeah. Well, like this situation, situation in Kilton. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like the situation. I mean, yeah. Right. Until so, once someone's dead, then it's, yeah. then it's, then they'll, a, yeah. right, then it's an issue. But, we don't want it to get to that point in any town. But we just don't have, as you know, towns run on a shoestring. We just don't have resources. We don't have a place to keep horses. And we're not going to ask Wilson or Elizabeth, you know, to impound them and keep them at their place. And then they could get harassed by this person. Um, probably never get paid. You're, if you did it, you would probably never get paid. All right. And it's expensive to take care of these large animals. Because it's, it's weird that there's like a humane society for pet, <coughs> I guess you call them <coughs> domesticated pets or whatever. Well, they but cover all them. animals. They, they, don't, don't, they, they don't, don't, they they don't, don't do this. They don't take them anywhere. Right. Well, they would do it if there was maybe neglect, if we had serious and yeah. significant neglect, but otherwise they're not going to get involved. Yeah. Um, there were a couple towns and we had some ordinances uh, from, I think, Westminster. We had some livestock ordinances. I don't know if, if they have ever tried to enforce them, but we had some draft ordinances sent to us um, from a couple other towns as well, mm -hmm. but they were town ordinances. Um, the only other thought I had, possibly, um, and I don't know if it makes any sense, would be to go the avenue of fences and containment. I don't know if they're legally, if there's any, if there's a, if that would be a better avenue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, they, if you had livestock, you had to have a fence that was adequate to maintain. Contain them, that um, was, right. Right, a particular, I mean, because there are a lot of different elk, bison, uh, rabbits. I mean, uh, if you were going to contain rabbits, that's a whole different fence than, than uh, bison. bison. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, or elk. Uh, uh, so. And then again, how do you, I mean, that's a really good idea. But then again, how do you make somebody build a fence? I mean, this our situation, the property, an adjoining property owner has a fence. You're right. Um, and this, these horses ruined her fence. So there's another avenue for them to take, the reason for them to take it to civil, you know, court, but they don't want to do that. Right. They, they, keep, they keep insisting that the town needs to do something, and we keep saying there's very little we can do. And unfortunately, they're not here tonight, so. And we can't require a permit for a horse like we can for dogs, right? That's authorized right. by statute. We could if there was an ordinance yeah. for it. Yeah, no, we don't require permits for cats, but I think uh, Williston and 
South Burlington mm -hmm. do. Um, it's, a, it's a local ordinance that would require a permit. Yeah, but so, so they, if you pull their permit, what are they going to be? Well, walking, with, so wagging a tail without a permit? So I mean, part of the permit <laughs> could be <laughs> adequate fencing. Well, the trouble yeah. is, is then you're, you're, punish, the you're punishing all the people that do things the way they're supposed to do because one person doesn't. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I These agree with that. These were fenced at one time, mm -hmm. and she was away in a friend of hers built a fence for the horses, and she tore it down. She didn't like where it was, so we put up the fence again, and I got a call from the guy that owned the land where the fence was. They didn't put it on her land. They put it on somebody else's land. That fence is gone. These animals aren't fenced. Well, and, and she's got, when she has fencing, it's single wire fence, single wire and she fence. feeds them dry hay yeah. when there's beautiful green stuff over there, yeah. and, and they're in this little area the size of this clerk's office. Yeah, it, or less, actually. Office. Yeah. And two horses, big yeah. horses. It's, it's and cruel. Yeah, so they're looking for free food anyway. Right. But the way that the Department of Agriculture looks at it, they're not neglected, no, right? No, because they have shelter, they have food, and they have water. Right. That's it. Doesn't matter the quality of the no, food. I've, I've done a couple of animal abuse cases with ag, and uh, I, mean, I was appalled at conditions in a chicken coop. There were uh, 24 dead chickens, two oh. alive, feeding on the dead chickens. And yep, I remember that. And I walked and said, I've seen worse. Yeah, I remember that. that. Yep. In the conversation. Is there a possibility to do something with those statutes? Or the animal neglect statutes to say that part of proper shelter is a fence? Could, I think. Um, my sense is that there would be a lot of a lot of but what about this kinds of issues raised if you did that? Um, <coughs> I thought about that. It's an interesting idea. I was going to ask a question. It it seemed it sounds to me um, from what I've read and what I'm hearing that um, it's possible to uh, give the town um, authority over the situation either through ordinance or through codifying the statute and increasing the fines and so on, but my sense is that you, that's not going to solve the problem because you want someone else to enforce it. Is, am I right? Well, about we want that? fines that are adequate and well, enforcement easily, mechanisms that are, if somebody that are strong and the judge in his somebody. or her discretion can't say, well, or the ag agency can't come in and testify against us. It has to be crystal <coughs> clear and really strong. And there has to be a way that if those fines that the judge agrees to or imposes, if they're not paid, then there has to be a way right. for the oh. animals to be taken. Or a lien on their Somebody property or, their or property. Uh, you know, docking of their paycheck. I mean, Something. serious stuff. A lien on the property is not much of a deterrent unless yeah. they plan on selling. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, but if, it's if, always hard to enforce. but if somebody's family is involved in the situation and they have to come up with money out of their pocket to pay the fines, that might. Or if you could add it to their taxes. Or yeah, if you could somehow add it to their tax bill. I don't know, something. How about private impoundment? You know, we talk about contracting uh, private plowing for certain, in certain situations. What about that, that idea that there's authority to impound. Most people aren't going to do it and don't have the, the tools to do it, but somebody might. And maybe we could have a contract just like we do with Central Vermont Humane Society. That's a thought. Um, and there is a statute, right, for you can have a pound, a pound keeper, if you come that. Um, but you've got to find, again, finding volunteers is hard. This one would obviously have some pay. Um, but then you can't. If that person's whose property, because the horses and cattle are property, if you take them, how do you get them to pay? And if they don't pay, then does that mean the town has to make the payments to the person who's kept the, the livestock for three months or whatever? And the town's insurance won't cover if something happens to them on someone else's property. It would be the volunteers or the homeowners insurance. Right, so somebody would have to have an upgrade significant upgrade to their homeowner's insurance. But see, it's kind of like there's all these good ideas and all these things, but how do we make any progress? What do we do? And that's my question, I guess, 
and sorry to dump some of this on you, Janet, but what would you suggest that the towns, I mean, I'm assuming if, you know, we might be able to get Plainfield on board. Um, Kim Jessup was wanted to come tonight. She's East Montpelier, Middlesex. I mean, there, we know enough towns around us and, and select board members and representatives and senators that, you know, maybe, what do we do? Do we send a, write a letter and send it to all of these different folks, you know? Does, well, I mean, putting legislation in it is relatively simple if you know what right, you want you to say. Right, you gotta know what you wanna say. But, um, it's the knowing what you wanted to say that I'm, I struggled with. with yeah. Field but do you think a couple that- of years ago, and I am now, I'm not sure, what the, and, and I, I can do it, but it won't do you any good if I put legislation in that's not gonna pass. Well, that's what um, I'm wondering, so is if you could get other, you know, some senators and other representatives to, you know, hang up and say, we introduced this, blah, blah, blah. Would, would you call the Yeah, would you be able to find support from other representatives and senators to um, support this if we came up with something, do you think? I, cer I certainly can try. Um, the important thing isn't so much getting co-sponsors, it's getting the relevant committee on board. Which, would be, which committee would it be? Well, it's it would probably, if if we're talking about ordinances, it would be government operations, which I would imagine would be fairly friendly. Mm -hmm. um, if we're talking about animal control, I think it would be both. ag, and I think they would be less likely to mm -hmm. be friendly. That's just my guess. Um, but it sounds like it could be both. Could, uh, it could yeah. Be both. I mean, I I think the the uh, both the easiest solution and the hardest one is the ordinance. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's hard because it actually keeps the town on the hook, but I think realistically the state police are not going to, mm -hmm. if we but tell them to do it, not gonna, <coughs> that's not going to be a problem. So if we adopted an ordinance, then there needs to be some kind of legislation introduced, maybe just ordinances in general, yeah. um, to have a better way to for towns to enforce and collect from ordinances, because there's all kinds of ordinances we could have, but most of them, like I said, aren't worth anything, because you can't, there's nobody to enforce them, and there's no way to collect money from somebody who doesn't have it. So maybe it would be to somehow make the ordinances more, have more weight and more teeth, teeth than what they currently do, because we have ordinances for other stuff that you just hope people do what they're supposed to do. So maybe a better option is to make an ordinance is more forcible, enforceable, somehow. And when I talk that to the judiciary, judiciary, okay, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm sort of thinking. Yeah, I mean, no, that's, that's good. That's a big undertaking because you're talking about all kinds of ordinances. Mm -hmm. If you're talking just about these, that would be a little more straightforward. Um, so I said, what you know, I can put something in, but it won't be useful for you if it doesn't actually result in something getting passed. Right, and right. So it, the bigger it is, the harder it is to get it through just because it affects more things. Um, when I talked to VLCT about um, Title 24 that talks yeah. about ordinances, it's clear in that statute that we can have an ordinance That's to regulate yeah. dogs yeah. and cats yeah. or domestic pets. And then there's the public nuisance, but I think that's never been tested for yeah. livestock. So if something could be added to that Just to statute say can, to say to we have the authority to. I think that would be fairly, and certainly would be fairly straightforward, I, I would think mm -hmm. it would be, um, I should write down the standards. What do you, do you have any, um, anybody else on the board, Wilson? And then you don't have to use the public nuisance part of it. Just go straight. Okay, we can send you the minutes, Jan. Yeah, yeah, yeah Katie takes great right. minutes, so you won't <laughs> miss a beat. Um, so this let me ask Marshfield, what, do you have any, do you want to try to get it together with Plainfield and East Montpelier to further flush this out? What do you think is going to be a good strategy going well, forward? Well, I mean, I think because Plainfield, Callis, and Marshfield sh share the same representative, representative and senators, mm -hmm. uh, and one of our senators, Andy, has been on the Marshfield Select Board and he's experienced yes. this problem. He was, he was, yeah. So I he knows what right. we deal with. Yeah. Uh, I invited um, him to come tonight, but I didn't yeah. hear that. Um, 
I think, yeah, I think that's a good avenue. Mm -hmm. I think we need to try to figure out the best, um, uh, you know, if we're going to go with let try to pass some legislation, mm -hmm. I think we need to try to find the best avenue, which, uh, whether it's ordinances, fences, livestock, mm -hmm. nuisances, whatever, try to figure out the best avenue to pursue um, mm -hmm. to, to make it something stick. Right. Um, so Katie, for the minutes in my to-do list, it sounds like we need to try to set up another time to meet. Hopefully maybe we can get at least Andy, and I'm sure Janet would come again. Andy Perchlick. Um, yeah, Andy Perchlick, who's our senator. Um, and he's from your town, right? Or is he from well, he, 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 he was. And he was. Oh, okay. But it sounds like maybe we need to do try to get another joint meeting together, see if we can get people from Plainfield to come. It would be great if they maybe, maybe grant monies to go to the Humane Society so they could purchase property where they could build a larger impound. That would be, like that would be county right. county by county basis. I don't know, county impound. County impound. It seems like idea. for Town of Cowles to build an impoundment like barn and fenced an area, that would be overkill because it's so infrequent. But we have had problems with dogs and, mm -hmm. and, and the like and people having animals they can't care for. But if we had like a county impound, maybe it's run by a nonprofit, a private nonprofit, um, and there were grant monies mm -hmm. made available to incent that for all of our counties, um, then maybe that would happen and then that would help us. Mm -hmm. So let me just ask the folks who just walked in, are you here for the horse discussion or are you here for the next one? Um, East Callis traffic. Okay. Good. Um, Okay, so you may not have to build it. Let's get multiple towns to contract with the same farmer or person mm -hmm. who has that, the re that's, a that's what I was going to suggest. Yeah. We have a, yeah. well, in, in the local area, there's enough old farms with buildings and infrastructure available. I think it would be easy to find somebody who well, they're right across from the health center in Plainfield. Uh, that he he has a. Um, the There's horse affected horses there. No, it probably doesn't. Well, see that and that's the problem. Uh, you're going to want to find somebody who may have the facilities, but not necessarily have animals there all the time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there are plenty of people around uh, that have cattle trailers, horse trailers, mm -hmm. who are who would be more than willing to. I mean, they're going to charge for their time. Oh yeah, they should. Um, yeah and uh, would be more than willing to come, you know, pick animals up. Mm -hmm. For us, containment or capturing is the biggest issue. Yes, I, I don't know that that's yeah. as big an issue for... It's a huge issue here because she doesn't keep halters on her horses. It's, so, I mean, I have, I have leads in the car, but I don't have a halter. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you, right, they're not... You just can't leap up on one of those perch rounds. <laughs> Ride them, cowboy. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So and, back, and then we go back again to how do you collect the money from somebody who probably doesn't well, have it? Well, they and, don't and, get their animals back. Well, that's well, that and that's the other part that would have to be clarified in through legislation. But, but that that is, I think that's laid out and it's in, already in stack. Right. Yeah. It's the the big problem is like the impoundment fee is mm -hmm. ridiculous. It's right. not going to cover. It's not even going to cover the feed. No, not um, at all. Right. And you know, a facility like you're saying, somebody's, you know, somebody's gonna say for these cattle that Marshfield has, mm -hmm. they're gonna have to have some substantial uh, fencing or uh, corral or something, mm -hmm. at least until the animals get settled down right. and feel comfortable. Right. Um, it being in that location. Well, you mentioned um, the right. And, and same thing with a horse. I mean, a, a horse. Does if a, a horse gets need a big wood corral. Can you, could we also have something where if the owners of the property don't reclaim and pay their fees, could they be sold? That's that's already in statute. Now. That's that's already something that can be done. But but it's probably never been done, has it? So hard. It's not not, not, not the last hundred years. Right. No, right. So Horses are mean. like pianos. <laughs> People try to give them away. <laughs> oh really? You know, it's like. That's the old one. Otherwise, they, 20 days. Otherwise, they shall be sold by the pound keeper ooh, at public auction. Mm -hmm. The public auction. Yeah, there we you might go. have better luck selling 
hamburger on the hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, maybe. You just have to pound one and I get the message. Mm. Well, I don't even know. Well, um, the, the idea, my idea, um, I'll let this go in a second, but um, about having a, a fixed facility that's, yeah. you know, owned by a nonprofit yeah. is someone could have a fancy for this, hey, I can make a little money, and then they find out, you know, they're, they're having to maintain this a wooden corral. Yeah, they're, they're not going to make any money. And for the, uh, the off chance that someone's going to call them on a Sunday yeah. night and, mm. and drop know, once every house. five years. So that's why I think if there was something the Humane Society could, and maybe it's, it's, it's regional, but then, it, then there's a place that you can call a hauler and haul the critters to. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of out of the town's hands, maybe even. Does the, does if there was the, an ability to Does the Humane delegate. Society have the authority to... No, I was thinking that the town had the authority. No, but I wonder if the yeah. Humane Society already does have the authority to take large animals and house them somewhere. I can find out about that. But it's the, you know, it's the cost of the facility and maintaining it, so right. it would have to be, I think, state funding. Don't they get their authority for their contract with us? Well, that's for dogs and cats and things like that. It doesn't say anything about livestock, I don't believe in that contract. No. Well, the statute talks about pound keepers. Right. That's where their authority comes from. We have right. a pound keeper. Mm -hmm. for right. Well, and see, Wilson's not a pound, our pound keeper. He's our animal control officer, as is Elizabeth. We have so the Humane Society could mm -hmm. easily be Either. our pound keeper for mm -hmm. livestock, too, if they chose to accept that. Right. If you choose to accept this mission, they're not going to. They're not going to. <laughs> but if you had a regional large animal pound keeper appointed by multiple municipalities, right. you had someone who was the, let's call it large animal animal control officer for multiple municipalities who had the ability to mm -hmm. corral the large mm -hmm. animals, transport them to the pound that we formed, and then under the statutory authority that already exists, you have to pay the cost of impoundment before your animal gets released. You have we get a little bit more um, fine that goes along with this, um, that's actually collectible. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, the, you, each town could also pay a stipend well, like each we, like each yeah, year. Do with the um, maintenance fee. Right, and then the, and then they could get they would get that plus they could yeah the pound keeper sort of on retainer you get yeah. a, right you, that's you, yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. That yeah. would cover their cost of it having would, some hay already. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So we what would... We get a central Vermont one. Right. So it's yeah. almost quarter of eight and we need to wrap this up. So what do we want to do going forward? Do we want to try to set up another time to meet with Plainfield, try to get Andy Perchlick, Janet? Um, is that how, what much, how much time do we have as far as the legislative well, process goes, Do you? would you say? I would say that it, it, it I mean, have two or three months, but knowing the way these things take time, I would keep working at it hard. Right, right. right. Uh, Do you think it makes sense to also I think have someone from the ag okay. department? We could try mm -hmm. that. We could try to get somebody from ag. I was thinking maybe we could get somebody from CDH. They must get. Anson Tevis lives in Cabot, so right. he's close by, and he's. The yeah, number one. Ag, right. the number one, but the pound yeah. is probably. And then, right, and plus we could see if we could maybe get somebody from some Vermont Humane Society to come to a meeting yeah. as well, because they might have ideas or thoughts, because I'm sure they probably get calls. Mm -hmm. I can call Erica home from the bag. Erica? Okay, so Wilson could call a Erica. Pilot program mm -hmm. I'm just talking a pilot about. program? A pilot program for regional large animal impoundment. Right. right. Uh, set up the model and then... I think um, maybe talking with either UVM or Vermont Tech might not be a bad idea because they both have existing facilities mm -hmm. um, f and they deal with large animals. Yeah. They probably aren't going to want... Well, let's start out with this, this other group, see about putting a meeting together. When does Marshfield Select Board meet? We're first and third okay, Tuesdays. First and third Tuesdays. Okay, we're second and fourth Mondays. I don't know what point that is, but I wonder, I wonder if Jim drafted something. If that might move it more quickly, so that people are responding to a draft document rather than conversing about it that? more. Or can you do that? Not yet. Just sort of an outline of a regional, right. or, I think a, a regional, regional large a regional animal pound. impoundment program. Yeah. Fee structure. You, you think you have authority to do that now? 
Well, you can, you can do an interlocal it. agreement. So in yeah. any, anything a municipality can do, multiple can do municipalities joint. can agree yeah. to do jointly. So you would need legislation to do it. It would the, be just the, a question of... To do, right. And then the well, legislation you, might support the fines yeah, uh, I've on the back end. Yeah, I've got myself, the, the ordinance, something about fencing, but I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, in and, and, and raising the impoundment fee. Right. In the animal cruelty statutes, we're supposed to provide all these things for the animals safety well fences provide safety. provide safety right. keeps them from getting hit by a car yeah yeah, yeah. Fine. yeah. Well, if we did if we did an intermunicipal agreement would it be likely then that the pound keeper would be covered by municipal insurance through vlct we could pay the pound keeper enough so that they could have they their could own insurance own. so so do, do folks think this was helpful um, yes. Let's keep it on the radar. Uh, as far as Marshfield goes, if you guys want to meet, we can try to find a mutual day mm -hmm. or time. Um, Is Bobby the best one for me to communicate with? If you communicate with Bobby, uh, it goes to all the select board members, and okay. yeah, it gets to I looked everybody. on your website. I didn't see any email addresses for. You folks, I'm, I'm thank you for supporting yeah, email on. Yeah, usually everything goes to the town clerk's office and then... Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So that's the best way. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any, thank, thank you so much for coming and sharing or your story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we feel for you. We, <laughs> yes, and we feel we, for you too. I'm sending myself now. By the way, oh, um, I spoke oh, with yeah. the sheriff's department today and I told him of what we're dealing with in both towns. Did you see him? Uh, no, I actually spoke with Brett Meyer. Okay, they're coming to one of our meetings. And that's what he mentioned. So um, he'll, he's expecting to hear about it. Um, no doubt. And, and he was going to look a little closer into what if it, the sheriff's department could Well, and we, and we could invite Brett or Sam to come to this meeting if they're, you know, if they're available, great or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, good, because I, I know he's, I've got him lined up, so and I figured probably when he meets with us, this issue will come up. <laughs> well, good luck. All right, thank you thank again you. for coming. We're, we're hoping our problem's done for the summer. <laughs> well, we have a lot of time. I don't think, I don't think ours is. <laughs> thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Yep, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder, I, I was going to do some, um, I must have marshaled in the road. Like it, had walked, uh -huh, it walked under the fence. Oh, you know, there was no, so little, little. It was that, it was really little. And I stopped at the wrong farm. You know, I stopped at the wrong Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Oh, no, that was not. This is way. All righty. So, we all learned a lot about livestock. Big cows. Cows. Did you get all the, are you good with all the information you need? I think so. All, all, all. Very yeah. good. All right, next up, traffic calming in East Calus. I'll keep it some more. Huh? I bought hay from his dad. Okay. Um, traffic calming in East Calus. And that's been going on for a while. Does every, let's do introductions again. Does everybody know everybody or not? All right, I'll start. Denise Wheeler, Select Board. Cliff Hemmons, Kellis Select Board. Rose Kelchuk, Select Board. Kaylin Carson, Reporting Secretary. Karen Lee Fannin, Select Board. Mm -hmm. oh, Judy Fitch Robert, I'm the town clerk. John Brabant, Kellis Select Board. Mary Rocks, Eddie's Kellis. Keeper Rock, Betty Kellis. Cyrus Parker with the Doinal House in East Dallas Village. Linda Evans from East Dallas. Brian Evans, East Dallas. Scott Massage, East Dallas. Uh, Evan Hinchliffe, I'm with Orca. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Scott and I have gone back and forth a bit about traffic calming in East Dallas. We, Rose did a really great minute search of the past talk about the traffic calming these callous. There was a group of folks a few years ago that got together to try to do some work with um, in East Callis, and one of the things we looked at was um, traffic calming. We talked about crosswalks, cones, 
some kind of a speed bump thing, but that doesn't work. They do plows. Narrowing effect. Narrowing effect. Um, I've always wanted to see those signs installed that are now solar. Um, and Woodbury, Scott can talk about this, Woodbury um, has them, they have them in Montpelier. I think they're very effective. We used to have one that was on a cart, but it's kind of I've seen better days. So go ahead, Scott. Okay. Um, John reminded us all today that this has been going on for a long, long, long time. And yes, it has. You know, nobody disagrees. Um, it's, it's just a question of really of making it happen and I have to thank Cyrus who's in many ways responsible for the health and safety of, at the Dwinell homestead. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids you know from not from around here are there in the summers when their families are there in residence and it is scary for those parents to see the huge amount of traffic. Um, and I think the Owens know that well, they have to take the road to get on the bus in the morning, and sometimes that's at what ten of seven in the morning. Mm -hmm. and get the bus over at school. I mean, over at the store, at the store. and right. it's pretty sketchy it's first thing in the morning. Yeah. Well, I know we've had a traffic study done, thinking about what we could do for traffic calming and the signs. So I think we just have to get refocused back on how we would get the sign in Woodbury. Were they about twelve thousand a piece? You said. For a set, yeah. First, for, for a set, set. For one on each end. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that this just came up because just last week I saw those, uh -huh. and I was like, "How do we get those for right. East Callis?" Yeah. And then I could, I got a phone call today saying this was happening, and I'm like, "Oh." I mean, I just it works for me. Like I see those and right. go. Yeah, they do help. They're very helpful. Flashing up. <laughs> well, they have so many big trucks that come along that road. It's so scary. Right. You're right. It's not just the volume. To, it's the size. It's especially the granite trucks. As they come off from the north, and they yep. speed with the GVWs. Yep. From our vantage point, where we look west, right mm -hmm. into the Moscow Woods Road, watching people, the narrow window they have to turn left to go north. Mm -hmm. Some of those rigs as they come down, I followed them into town, and sometimes mm -hmm. they never touch their brakes while well through. Yeah, I mean, this has been on my to-do list for several years. I guess I didn't do a very so, good job. So, true story. Done, but... I don't know how many remember. I used to live in Woodbury. Um, there was a granite truck that was sailing down from Sherbrooke, I think, uh, with a, a granite block, and something happened. It became unfastened. The truck hit a bump. The block went sailing in the air, and actually a guy was in a compact behind it, and the block started coming to him. And he, I don't know how this guy did. He had the presence of mind to step on the gas. I would hit the brakes, right? He stepped on the gas. The block went over his car, and it landed on a corner, and it put a hole. Well, it bounced off the road, and it put a hole in the front yard of a camp right on Woodbury Lake. I don't know, seven, eight feet into the soil, and sat like this. It was so heavy, it could not be moved by a hydraulic piece of hydraulic equipment, so they had to jackhammer it apart into pieces that were small enough. This is the kind of stuff that's coming down that highway at 60 miles an hour. You know, if you, if those trucks are not stopping. Well, and there's those SCI, those red ones or something? It's going to the landfill and coming in. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, and that road's pretty hammered. But well, and if you come up that from 14 headed towards the store, you know, people step on the gas to get up that, I think they're going to step on the gas to get up that hill, even though it says 35. Mm -hmm. So I They tend to be coming slower going north because of that blind corner. Right. Um, it's coming south where they... But then, right, but then they get on it. The yes, yeah, that's, right. that's right. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Cyrus has a good story about uh, yeah, last, something happened there. Last summer, we just happened to be walking, picking our way to the store, like everything, and watched an elderly couple park across from the store, and it just happened one of those quiet times. There wasn't any traffic, so they kind of strolled across towards the store, just as a like a big Pepsi truck just doing what you had, had said was actually accelerating because trying to jack them up through mm -hmm. uh, through the village and uh, they had no place to go. I mean, they were literally were right in the middle of the road. Whoa. So he just swerved out of the way just as somebody also was trying to negotiate their way out of the gas pumps. Uh, so did, he even, like, did he even stop? 
What's that? Oh, no. No. He, no, it was a reaction thing. He, I think the gentleman pulled his wife back to the center line, Whoa. just enough room for him to go through. Wow, that's but, scary. But those are the things that you see. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot yeah. at night in particular. I'm sure you hear it too, a lot of close calls down there in the intersection of Moscow Woods. Yeah, you must hear the traffic a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean you're, 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 you're quite up through to the post office and around Moscow Woods. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not only at 14, I mean, it's across traffic too. Right? right, exactly. In fact, I wasn't sure if this was, because I just heard about it at about 5.30. Um, I didn't pay attention to the proper term. But anyway, um, I didn't know if this was going to be 14 or if it was going to be uh, Moscow Woods Road and um, Marshfield, Road. Marshfield Road, because that, I mean, I do a lot of walking and mostly walking, but running on, on um, Moscow Woods Road, and it's pretty. I mean, the cars come through there into the village pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I just, and I don't know whether whether signage is a possibility to. You know, well, I wonder if the um, if pedestrians the, or something. Well, I wonder if we had the, the speed limit signs, the flashing ones, mm -hmm. and people slow down because they see those. I wonder if that would help with the situation you're talking about. Get your attention. I think a lot of people coming on the back road over by the dump. I mean, that corner's pretty right. inviting for somebody who wants to go fast, even though they don't know who's coming. I was going to say, really? Well, I mean, you take some of these. I've seen it more than once. Yeah. I mean, kids, around, kids yeah. in VWs end up in the ditch there. <laughs> 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 and I would also say it's not just the granite trucks it is all manner of vehicles mm -hmm. that are flying through there and, and i've talked to neighbors who um who want to move because they're tired of pictures falling off from their walls oh, wow. uh, because it shakes the entire yeah. house it shakes yeah. we're on the back side of the mill pond and you can feel the really big trucks yeah. so where's your where are you um well, i always tell Ray really yeah, to early Erlene. do you know where do you know where Erlene leonard lived we're the house right next to hers oh, so right okay. on mill mm -hmm. street, street. Place to observe it. Yeah, I mean, or you hear them when they leave town headed mm -hmm. towards Woodbury. It, you know, if you've got somebody that's going to be whether it's a motorcycle or what, they hit that. You know, when they hit the straightaway yeah. over by the ball field. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, and that road's not in the best spot. To no, it's not. You would, think that would, you would think that would deter people <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is. It's a poor man's speed bump right there, but that mm -hmm. is. We've done just this last two years logging on both ends of the village. And we've had real difficulty getting our trucks out, you know, where the waterworks are. We had to build a woods road there. And that straightaway is amazing. It's Talladega. It's, an, it's incredible how fast as they come in both directions. But usually they're making their way out of the village and now they want to make time. So they, they step on Even though the road is in such bad shape. Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't matter. Because yeah. I've gotten complaints. Of, well, when's the town going to fix this road? It's like, well, it's not, it's not trans, so. yeah, It'll be worse when it's better. That's good. Right, yeah. exactly. The idea is to get some calming in place. And also, the bridge, we're told by AOT, maybe you folks mm -hmm. know, that the bridge, finally, the bridge has are finally Yeah, there's going to be three of them. Yeah, done. in spring of, of 21. Right. So to have anything in motion or have as much in motion as possible might be a good, good mm -hmm. idea. Because the paving would come after that, I'm sure. Yeah. Scott, remind me, did Woodbury get a grant for their signs, or did they pay for them? I talked to the guy who managed that, the former select board member, yeah, right. Lindsay, yeah. and he tried a number of places for grants. He, he said the most likely is AOT itself. They have grants for safety equipment, and he spent a considerable time pursuing that grant. He found out after everything, after he done a lot of, spent a lot of time on it, all that money goes to the sheriff. All what money? All the money from the Governor's Commission on Highway Safety that they allocate for safety equipment. By the, goes, goes, to the sheriff, goes to the sheriff. To the sheriff. By the sign or whatever. Who knows what they do with it? So yeah. don't waste your time. But it's. I mean, you know, they have they have some of those portable some of those carts. So they probably some some of the money probably went for that. Mm -hmm. But basically, the um, Skip said that he had spent a lot of energy looking for grants. And there may be some out there, mm -hmm. um, but given the total cost, um, it's the kind of thing that I think the town would support at town meeting. Mm -hmm. Budget for it. Yeah. 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 And 
Series of permits that have to get, go through AOT, and AOT has, sometimes has um, stipulations on the permit. One often is that they can mount their speed limit sign on our post, so we'd have to get a slightly taller post than yeah. we would if they weren't there. A couple of other things mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah. So, it, but but anyway, there's the there's the manufacturer of the equipment, and then the install is a the Woodbury used the company in um, Essex. And, we're very happy with them. And did they do all the permitting this company? No, it's up to would be up to us to do get all the permits. Okay. And they actually they did Woodbury paid them extra to do the um, dig safe and um, tr you know, traffic control when they, while they were doing the install. Hmm, okay, well that's all good information. So we'll have that in our minutes, and so I know thinking looking back what we need to do. So, so another, I think, important consideration is, you know, if we're talking about traffic calming, obviously the, the racetrack there should be part of that effort. But, you know, uh, at least visually, it, that thing goes outside of the village, yet it's still a concern to speed on that. Um, so I, I'd like to learn more about, maybe we should figure out more about how some municipalities get to have their city or village limits extended for miles. I, I, so I brought up Montpelier. That's always been a little bit, it's not Montpelier's fault they're doing a good job, but it's been a thorn in my side that, you know, and this dates back to when I was on the Woodbury Planning Commission that we, I think we had AOT in, and they were so back, it's a different AOT now. This is 20 some odd, 25 years ago, but they were very much like this, and we need, our job is to see that vehicles move through as fast yeah. as possible, and traffic calming, the guy didn't even know what it was, yeah. um, and they were very, they were very reluctant to even consider such ideas. And I brought up the issue about how you set village limits, and, and how far can we go on a state, what would otherwise be a state highway. Um, so Montpelier, Route 2, that, that busy route east-west goes from whatever, Washington State to Maine. That goes right through a little downtown Montpelier. And 
it's 25 and 35 miles an hour by the cemetery, and I think Montpelier maintains that stretch of road, but we might want to look into that too. You mean for, I'm trying to understand what you So if, if once you have, so it, if it's a designated front. village, then you could slow the speed to 25. Okay, that's a really good And then we, really we have idea. more say over traffic calming, because AOT is mm -hmm. going to get in our way on that. They're not, they're not looking for traffic calming on mm -hmm. what's their property, or their, their section of road. We, we have more authority in a village um, or city. Yep. Um, so I, I don't know how that works. And that might be another thing we could have Janet, our representative, explore, mm -hmm. improving our authority to the extent that we're limited because we're not a city, but yep. a town. Yep. You know, another really important thing would be to get a crosswalk at the store, at yes. the ball field, yes. um, and morning lights for those. Right. Uh, apparently, Woodbury's crosswalk has been there forever. His grandfather or something. And, um, the skip who uh, researched all this for Woodbury uh, discovered it way back in the records of AOT somewhere. I'm really? Because the school is there. That one. Yeah, the oh, school yeah. is there. Yeah. But that's another thing. Maybe, you know, that maybe before the paving happens, uh -huh. um, if we could get, if we could establish speed limits, um, uh -huh. crosswalk, um, you know, anything we could do to narrow narrow the road and create a beautiful entrance uh, entryway I mean it was kind of it, it's beautiful what they did over in Danville and you yes, folks have had the pleasure nice. they they actually fought I mean AOT was going to widen and ran that thing through yeah. and they fought and they it was great a wonderful story yeah. uh, so they just through went the whole, through there on Saturday and they've got how the and, and it, the roadway actually isn't any narrower but they got this curving effect and in guardrails you have to come in like this and it it has an effect, and then, then there's, you're entering the village 25 or 30, 30 maybe, and it, it slows you down naturally. Yeah. But in terms of the actual travel lane, it's the same width. Yeah. Right, but it but feels, you think it's less. Right, it feels, feels smaller. Yes. And they were yes. close to the road. So yeah. those are the kinds of tricks we want, and that was funded. There was special, it was a, they, they, got, they pursued some special grant, federal grant. It was, hmm. they had go through some steps, yeah. and I'm thinking yeah. that might be great for East Callis. Yeah. Well, we, we asked Jan at one time about speed limits, and I can't remember now, I just dug out the emails the other day about what you have to do to be able to um, lower speed limits, like on the, when we were asking about it for the county road. I'll have to look at Yeah, that's the town road. That's, that's, this is more state highway. State that's highway. Yeah. So but yeah, that's all part of the, the look we need to do. Right. Yep. Okay. I love the idea of trying to extend... Um, the corners of the village because yeah. we also have kids walking on that road to get to the ball field. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that is where yeah. they are starting. They're going their fastest, either coming in and going yeah. out. Um, so that's an that's an awesome. And idea. you need a transition zone. You know, right. it should be going from 50, yeah. at the north northern end of basically where the bend is where Jan Olson's house mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and that's where you should see speed zone ahead, then 40 then 35, and I think it should be 25 once you hit the village. I, I agree, um, that's what I've been saying too. And, and then they'll go 35 or 40, mm -hmm. you right. know, if right. they're speeding, not right. 85. I'm trying to remember, there are speed limit, the speed limit's 50, like by the town garage, and then when you get to jams, it goes down to 40. Or oh, it does, there is a transition. There is a transition. <laughs> by the ball field. But, okay. Right, by the ball okay. field. But, you know, like I said, there's no, it would be nice if you could do like Danville did, like right there at the ball field. But that yeah. would be a really long stretch to do. Well, Danville's is a pretty long stretch. Yeah, yeah. it look it looks beautiful. They extend it way out there. Saturday. It's great. Yeah, yeah. well, that's millions and millions of dollars. Right, and that's where we. I would love it if we could get there somewhere. Right, someday. But in the meantime, but in the meantime, you know, there's going to be that repaving. Mm -hmm. um, anything we can do to get the, to establish the crosswalk, to establish anything to make it narrower. Um, I wonder if we could get them to install those as part, part of repayment. But that wouldn't be, that would be 2021. We don't want to wait that long. Yeah, yeah. Well, the bridges are 2021. The paving, I, I didn't see it on the site. But it's I, kind I of, had a brief conversation with David Ellenberg today. He's on vacation. Yeah, he just Ellen, touched yeah. me yeah. with his, his phone. He said one interesting thing that the TAC has been being, John, you probably heard this. AOT would love it if the village would take over 14. In the village limits. I'm not quite sure what this means. We might well, if there's a quid pro quo, we could probably work on that. Uh -huh. You mean yeah. take it as a town road in yeah. the village? Yeah. I'm not quite well, that's sure. what Montpelier did. Yeah, yes. that's right. You mentioned that. Yes. Yeah, if, uh -huh. if it could be our, if it could be our class two highway in 
inside the village. Like the county road. Yeah, there'd be expenses. I don't know. I don't know who plows it or who pays it. But that's I what think. happened with the approach. Excuse me. On, yeah. Into Montpelier from Worcester. That's why it's 25 miles per yeah. hour as you get by oh. the community college of Vermont. From there, in you you creep 25. Right, when you're coming down the county road into Montpelier. No, 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 uh, from Worcester. Elm Street. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, but it's the same way when you get to... Yep, same thing. Right. And yes. they had the ball field there, the rec field, and, and it mm. becomes pedestrian. Yeah. And it took, it was hard work, but they... they Interesting. Got yeah. Interesting. So it might, might be, or, you know, what, what do they want? What would they, what would it you yeah. know, take? For us we'll to do that. We want to extend the village limits. Yeah, you know? we, want to, we want to control, we want to set our own speed limits. Yeah. We'd love to put in a couple of crosswalks. Yes. I wonder if we could get David Allen to do some <coughs> um, work on this as well, part of task. As, 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 as he, and he's been sitting in those meetings. Right. And had AOT, there's AOT guys there right. at every meeting. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the things that this was one meeting's worth of presentation. I wonder so would they. Could, would it, I wonder if it would make sense to contact David. I mean, he's been on TAC for a while now, and yeah. see if he can get an agenda item added to a, net, a future TAC agenda mm -hmm. to talk about um, Route 14 in, in East Calais. Yeah. And, and, and then AOT yeah. would be there, and then a couple of us mm -hmm. could go to the meeting. Maybe we can get somebody from, I'm calling it the new AOT, because the, the, yeah. the yeah. current crop of AOT engineers and yeah. planners they're very different than they were, again, when I had that 25-year-ago conversation. And if you look, if you go um, Route 15, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I mean, it, yeah. it basically brings you to just about a stop. Yeah. That was the most dangerous intersection in yeah. Vermont. There were so many fatals there, and, and they wanted to put a traffic light. And you know, people, the problem was people were running right through the stop sign on 100, not realizing they had gotten to 15. Yeah. So with this roundabout, it made it such a safe intersection. It's amazing. Yes. And they did it. They've done it on 302 in Orange. Mm -hmm. And yes. it's made these dangerous intersections much safer. Yeah. So maybe they'll work with us, yeah. you know. So there, I guess there are four things that I would ask, or that all of us together <laughs> would ask to get to make have have happen, um, the last study was 2016. So maybe request um, okay, mm -hmm. request CBRPC to do another, you know, with all the, with the same parameters as the 216. Mm -hmm. and I think we could see some interesting changes there. Traffic study updated uh, traffic. So it's an updated traffic, traffic study. study. Yeah, yeah. Um, try to get hold of the cart, the sheriff's cart. Um, you know, it's, it goes on a two-week rotation, and it travels all around the around Washington County. But you know, get it, get it, or actually a couple of them. I will contact the sheriff and yeah, ask them. That those. would be great. Yeah. And then, sort of more long-term, is thinking about after paving. So getting some connection. I mean, find out about this about David's idea about opening the road. Um, but even if that wouldn't work out, um, so think about the. The, the permits for the flashing signs are, are, are easy, but permits for the crosswalk is going to be a bear. And as we all know, changing the speed limit, it really should be 25. Yes, yeah, it should. Um, and, and anything we can do about narrowing before the repaving. So, so yeah, it's really more some, some liaison with, with the new AOT. And I think they could be, they could be fun to work with. I, mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. you know, trust them. Um, so, um, and here's the speed limit, yeah. permit for crosswalk. Narrow the road. Visually. Yeah, and visually, I'm just making yeah. myself a note, so, because Danville is a really good example. Yeah. Um, scene bridge, that's what we got them to do, too. Hmm? The, on the scene bridge in North Fly through there, there too. Yeah. Right, but we had, it was the same stuff, like, how do you get the mm -hmm. visual? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the brown brown guardrails. And getting the cost of the signage of the flashing sign on, in March. Mm -hmm. Oh right, right. Um, yeah. Town meeting warning. Okay. We may I, not. I think. I mean. Yeah. I really have to thank Cyrus for <laughs> bringing this up. Well, over can, and over in the last I year, can, because we just worry about their kids. Good, yeah. Good I'm glad. And, and our neighbors in the village are certainly, 
you know, there are more and more kids in East Dallas. It's wonderful. It's great. It's great. Yeah. 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 But when they ask to go to the ball field, you're like, yeah, you're let me get an 11 year old and a almost a 14 year old. And when you're hesitant to let a 14 year old ride on 14 yeah, to get yeah. to the ball I field, yeah. you know, when we were kids, it didn't seem like a big deal, but mm -hmm. yeah. maybe we weren't. I mean, I don't know if there's more traffic yeah. or what. Well, there's probably way more traffic. Way more truck yeah. traffic. Yeah. 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 Well, the other thing is you you see people, and those shoulders are very unforgiving coming into Cal's. Yeah. You see people checking their phones as they roll into town. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You don't want your kid walking along there. Yeah. One, one last thing might Whoa. the Danville, uh, uh, I think there might be some data on how that spurred economic uh, development. Uh, activity, yeah, and of course, Callus. It's maybe not just vitalizing, maybe revitalizing, and mm -hmm. the store is going to survive. Mm -hmm. um, right, could have a I think farmers maybe market a, on the Twinnell Field. <laughs> but it could just have a lot of impact. Uh, well, you could have a farmers market right across from the store, and that if like, the store is the still there. I mean, well, the rec center owns that property. Right. Mm -hmm. What about the? Uh, oh, I guess it's probably not much for parking, but. In the post office parking lot on Sundays, or yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things well, that's that where the kids play now because it's the safest place without right. leaving the town. I mean, I mean there's, there's a lot of stuff we can do in East Cal. Right. Bridge across the, the lake or the brook yeah. to the ball field yeah. would be good from the village. Yeah, yeah. some things. Long it's unfortunate that that's <laughs> yeah, but it's unfortunate that it's where it is. Yeah. 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 But Linda Clark was just saying the other day that when they Raised their kids, you know, however many years ago, 20, 30 years ago, just the traffic was nothing like it is now. Okay, well, this has been good. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. And if you check the website in a couple of days, the minutes will be posted so you can see what we kind of talked about. And I don't know anything I can do. I would be, I would be glad to. The little board has to be in touch with AOT. Right. Um, and the board has to decide how to handle uh, oh, okay. getting bids for the, okay. for the gizmo. Right, for the signs. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, maybe, so maybe we can talk with um, sure. Skip. What was his last name? Lindsay. Skip Lindsay. Lindsay. Yep. He's Woodbury. Yep. Okay. And he actually yes. off, uh, he offered to send me a lot of material, which I got just before this meeting, so I didn't forward it on to you. Um, but I will. Take a look at. I haven't even looked at it yet. I'll take a look at it and forward okay. it to the board. It's got. It's pretty much a complete package of what he did there okay. for the for the speed signs. Okay. Good. Well, it sounds like John knows him, so that's helpful. Yeah. yeah he, you know, as a as a hard, dedicated board member, he just sort of took it on himself and yeah. know, said, "I'm going to make this happen." Good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome thank to you. stay. See ya. Thank you. I know, nobody ever wants to stay. I'm sure you're going to be here. I'll be in the next one. Thank you. Hi. 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 We'll be with you in just a minute. Now, Say it out of time. I wish you were. I'm trying to catch someone. Are you? You're not leaving us. No, no. Welcome to the East Coast. Not that we are not seeing the faces. I'm sort of working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you want to do IT real quick? Yeah. Um, basically, not with any real updates since we last met. Um, last week, the office uh, was knee deep in the um, audit, and so it didn't seem like a good time to schedule a meeting. But Judy, we have a meeting, staff meeting coming up this Thursday, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so what happened at the last uh, select board meeting is they asked me to 
meet, well actually Denise and I to meet with the office staff um, and go over the presentation that I made to the select okay. board. Um, because what we really need from the office staff is a good understanding of what our needs are. Because what we want to do now is go back to these vendors who um, we think might potentially be good fit and say, okay, this is what you offered, but this is what we need. Mm -hmm. And get those responses closer to being in line with our needs so that we can really get to an apples and apples comparison. And it's not just about what is the least expensive option it is what is the best investment mm -hmm. for the town to make in IT services so we get the largest return on that okay. investment. So that's that's kind of what we're planning to do. What time um, we meet? Is it, don't you have somebody coming in Thursday at 9.30 or something? Well, 9.30 was we're, the time that Barbara requested we meet if there was no uh, uh, town, hall? town hall meeting. Yeah, we haven't I don't know whether there's a town hall meeting yet. I think there is a town hall meeting, and we'll just meet after that. After that? They, okay, I thought you said that. Yeah, I, thought I, somebody was, I thought somebody was coming in, but maybe that's what it was about, was this meeting. The only thing I saw was that we've got a different phone guy because yeah. Rowdy's on vacation. Right. I think oh, that's maybe that's it. Yeah, the, 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 maybe yeah that's there's a couple thing. different things was, happening this week. But right, I thought that that's what it was. The oh, phone guy. Yeah, he's Thursday. coming. Earlier. Oh yeah. I don't know. I have to look at that. All right. Well, just let us know because we want to get this done with you, with you guys. I would imagine a conversation taking forty-five minutes to an hour. Okay. Good. And that's what I have to report. And you message. sent out emails to the potential mm -hmm. vendors saying that you know we're delayed, blah blah blah, and nobody had a problem. Nobody had a problem. They're not necessarily reading the emails because I had a couple of them come back to me. Okay, so we're on for the date I picked, right? No, I just asked you to tell me if you would be available. We haven't scheduled any meetings yet. Mm, right. So Okay, so they need to double check their email. Right. And I will definitely be sending out another email because the other thing related to this that I need to share with the board is um, we had talked about potentially having meetings the week of 12. August 12th and I will not be available that entire week in person to attend such meetings. Mm -hmm. The, the other thing I would week. add is is an IT change is going to be very disruptive mm -hmm. and we just can't have it during the tax collection and that is basically September through December so in some ways this is almost delaying the whole thing a year from when we started. Mm -hmm. If that's what it takes to get the right fit and to really analyze it, mm -hmm. that's what it takes. Right. And all of the, one of the requirements of the RFP is that all of these offers had to have a validity period of 180 days. And if we go into negotiations with any vendor, even if we stay with the same vendor, so there would be a, at least a 60 day threshold before any changes could happen or even be implemented. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to, I have to look at a calendar to count that out, but yeah. Right. Yeah. So realistically, I think it puts us pretty late in the year. Okay. okay. Thanks, Cliff. You're welcome. All right, so um, I guess we'll maybe need to do introductions again. Do you, do you know all of us, Ted? Not everyone. Okay. okay, so we'll do introductions again. Denise Wheeler, Select Board. Cliff Emmons, Cal Select Board. Rose Pelchuk, Select Board. Katie Lane Carson, the Recording Secretary. John Bray Vance, Select Board. Sharon Wynn Fan, Select Board. And if you could introduce yourselves. I'm Peg Tassie. I'm Ken Tassie. Thanks. My Little brother. brother. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can see a resemblance there. <laughs> and this is um, Orca. I told you that they were video recording um, our meetings. So you had, I don't want to have you go into, you know, all of the details, and you did send us a, a letter. Um, and I think it's in the, is it in the Google folder? It is, I yeah. can bring it up if okay. you like.
So if you want to give us, um, just a, like I said, so you don't have to go into all the personal stuff, we just want to kind of reiterate what you said in the letter. Um, yeah, sure. So um, our stepdad. Do you want to come and sit at the table? So sure, that would be oh, great. Yeah. I feel a little nervous to be honest. Um, so our stepdad is David Rogers. He was married to my mom, our mom, um, for 33 years, and our mom passed away in 2016, in February of 2016. And he was developing dementia, uh, probably starting in maybe 2014. It was kind of coming on, and it's gotten very advanced. And I came down to look up some things here um, and found out um, that his house, the house that all our kids, I mean, my daughter took her first steps in that house, um, is up for a tax sale. And well, it's not up for tax sale yet. It's possibly coming up for tax sale. I'm sorry, thanks. And um, I guess um, uh, that we were surprised to hear about that. He has late taxes and stuff. Uh, but what's happening is that he's um, he has people that are supposed to be caring for him. Sorry, this is just hard stuff to, mm -hmm. to say. Yep. And um, my brother asked for a welfare check because we haven't we've been denied contact with him since October. Um, there's four of our siblings. I'm the oldest of four of us. And um, when the police officer came back. Um, they told him that he was terminally ill and he was in a facility. They wouldn't let him in the house, the officer. The officer had a funny feeling about it and went back again. And we then found out that he was taken out of state. And in the interim, um, because of some of the stuff that's going on, which we won't get into too much, the J Jamie Renner, who's the um, assistant um, attorney general, opened an investigation into um, elder exploitation. And while I was here, um, I, I saw that the person who's supposed to be caring for him, while he was supposedly in a facility, terminally ill, which we think she means from Alzheimer's, um, was put onto this property. Her name was put onto the property and a couple of other properties, from what we understand. So there's some fishy stuff going on, and if it is going up for tax sale, we're, and we don't understand really that process, although I, I got to talk a lot with um, Sandra and, um, and, and with you and with you as well, but we don't know, like, does that mean it gets put up for sale in five years, or is that kind of soon? And what we're asking for is some time for this investigation mm -hmm. to figure out what's really going on because we we hope to be able to keep mm -hmm. the home and the family. Well, so. to answer your question, the board tonight will be looking at a list of potential properties that would go up for tax sale. Okay. And the select board has the ability to say, you know, yes or no. And I don't know what everybody else, you know, will think or, or vote. Right. We have to vote to send properties to the tax sale and to the the attorney that does those. So you know we, we right. base it on like for instance this is there's an ongoing investigation, you know different things like that. So that will play into you know you have you haven't even had a chance probably to even figure this out. Yeah, we don't. We're still waiting. We just right. We don't even know if he's okay. That's which yeah. Is, which is just. You know, that must be really hard. I feel. I feel for you. It is. It's, yeah. It's, so you know we have a pretty. We have a really good select board. So um, I think everybody will be empathetic. Yeah. I wonder. Um, and if. Do you have any idea the timing of this investigation? Have they given you um, any information? I, Can you I contacted. Um, I, I requested a welfare check. Um, Actually, before I contacted Jamie Renner, and that was um, 
see. Mm-hmm. On June 11th, mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, so, and Peggy just described that welfare check. Um, it was about a week after that that I contacted Jamie Renner. Um, we, you know, corresponded by email and, and by phone a few mm-hmm. times, and he felt that there was enough um, material uh, that was questionable that mm-hmm. would warrant you know, an investigation of some sort. And he can do that even though your dad's not in, your stepdad's not in Well, he, he was, um, he, uh, if, I'll just give sort of a quick timeline. Um, I had called, uh, we'll call him Pop, um, in Florida on the end of April, and I was told by um, an individual who's sort of uh, intercepting phone calls that they would be coming to Vermont in a few weeks. Um, so I inquired then, and probably mid, mid-May, um, and, and learned that he was in a facility. That's when I couldn't reach him and asked for a, a welfare check to be done. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we were just being blocked from communicating for a long time. So, um, But we were told that he was in a facility being taken care of, mm-hmm. and as Peg described, you know, terminally ill. Um, and then, it, it, you know, weeks went by, and when, when Peggy came here to check on, uh, you know, look for a marriage certificate mm-hmm. or for, you know, property information, um, that documents were signed uh, by Pop, you know, with his signature um, under the, under the sort of, or in the, in the presence of his attorney on May 15th and June 3rd which was the time that he was here supposedly in a facility mm-hmm. um, over to someone else's name, or t- jointly mm-hmm. together in, with, with another person. Yeah. Um, so, so to answer your question, it, it, would, it would be somewhere in the middle to the end of... It's really June. We don't know how yeah, long second, it's going to take. Second, second yeah, week of June exactly until now. now. Um, but, uh, but what Jamie said was that now that he is not in the state, um, the, they can make inquiries, but there's not really much authority that they have. Um, so he, he asked me to contact people in Virginia, and I've done that. Okay. And you're sure he's not in the state? I mean, that, that's the representation, but... Um, no, we are no sure. a, actually, yeah. I, I ordered a welfare check in Virginia, mm-hmm. um, and uh, after about a week, they did find him and said that they spoke with him. And I was stonewalled to some degree, sort of. Mm-hmm. There was a little bit of a <coughs> an attitude, um, mm-hmm. as if maybe the sheriff and uh, might you know. That's just kind of my mm-hmm. my intuition interpretation, kind of intuition, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But um, and didn't really get much cooperation, mm-hmm. other than yes, they found him and they saw him f- mm-hmm. physically spoke with him in person. Mm-hmm. So he's, you know seems to be in, in, in decent health. So as his children, you don't have a right to visit with we're, him? We're his stepchildren. We're his stepchildren. Yeah, we're his stepchildren. So he did not adopt you all? No, no. he, the sto- I wish I could not tell you, I wish I could tell you the discount. incredible story of how they met and they yeah. eloped, yeah. but he was my landlord. Uh-huh. And my mom came up here in the 80s and they fell in love. Hmm. And, uh, it's a really hysterical story, which someday if I see y'all at a gathering, I'll tell you because it's, right. it's a great but family all, story. We have, I think, ten, they have yeah. ten grandchildren, uh, you know, between we four siblings, mm-hmm. uh, who grew up with them as their grandparents. Um, yeah. Even though our physical dad is down in Florida, they, our kids really never got to see him much. You mean the biological? Biological, yeah. Oh, our our, our dad, physical dad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, we don't need to. Yeah. You yeah. don't need no, to have, no, have no, all that no, information. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's so just, just to answer uh, right. your right. question, yeah. Okay. yeah, we're stepchildren. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but he was our stepdad for 33 years. Right, right, right. 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 It's, it's not, yeah. uh, we were with him longer than I was ever living with my yeah. biological dad. Right. right. And if any of you know him, I mean, he's, sure. yeah. he's a great guy. So, um, and I take it from what just I'm just reading into what you're saying that he does not have other children. He doesn't. He have, does. Oh, he does. Okay. He has one daughter, um, and he has two stepchildren who are local. Well, they weren't okay. ever. Yeah. Okay. But, but for biological children, he has one. One. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And are you in contact with that person? So uh, I, can I tell a story? Sure. Do I, well, quick. I mean, I don't want, I don't want you to go into personal that's, stuff yeah, that's you know, that person. you don't have to. Yeah. We have been in touch with her. Okay. Hmm. All right. Does the select board have any other questions? Because we're going to decide, based on the treasurer's recommendations, what to send to tax sale tonight. Um, I have Sandra's number if we need to get her on the phone, but I think um, we can either do that now, while there, these folks are still here, or we can do it at the end when we do all of it. So you, what's your pleasure so these folks can maybe rest at ease a little bit? Assuming we're not going to be in an executive session when we're looking and considering the other properties, I would say we should try and resolve this while you're here so that uh, you know where you stand and I would completely agree with you and support you in this. And yeah, I mean if we did go into executive session to talk about any of this, which I don't think we really can we or have, should, we have, yeah. um, we've talked about it in open meeting before. Mm -hmm. I would just like to let these folks know while they're here. Yeah. So I guess I would make a motion. Well, can or I, do you want to? I, I want to make sure that that I'm I'm I, I mean I, I agree, but the taxes have to be paid, right? So so are you guys are you going to pay them? Is that so? Is there a plan? That's kind of what I'm wondering. Now there's still some investigations. Okay. Right. I don't think they lot, have. I don't think they have a the plan until going on that we haven't got a plan yet, and okay. we're, we're not in a position to. We just. We just care. Know. Yeah, we just don't want to see it get sold to a stranger, or right. or and we're not in a us four are not in a position financially to be outbidding right. somebody. Well, who just, re New York just remember though that if we don't do it now, we have to have something. I'm sure that the treasurer or the delinquent tax collector will want some kind of a plan going forward yeah. as to how this is going to get paid. I understand there's an investigation going on, but I still think. Um, you know, we have a lot of. There will be an endpoint. So. Right. There's yeah. got to be an endpoint. All we know, these people may just. You may get a check in the mail tomorrow. We don't know. Right. So. And we don't know who the check. We don't know who the tax bill went to. I don't. I don't have a clue. Um, is that? I mean, we wouldn't even know. Yeah. 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 Just. Just. I mean, this is what what I'm hearing is, you've got a lot going on. Yeah. And this is just another piece, and it's really new, and you need time to react and work yeah. and come, come up with a plan. plan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it just, we just need a little time. Yeah. So just know that you know this is this is a temporary, you know, yeah, reprieve. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to you know completely forget about it. I realize you have oh, so much oh, more yeah. important things yeah. to deal with emotionally and everything. So we want to make sure that you know we're not adding more stress to what already sounds like a stressful situation. If I can just ask one question. Um, as far as the, the process, like the tax treatment process of a house that's gone delinquent, or taxes that have gone mm -hmm. delinquent, what is sort of the, the standard timeline from the time a lien is issued to it going it gets, to auction, or does it well, well, it just, gets sent just to case our, by case? It gets sent to our um, tax, uh, our attorney that does tax sales, mm -hmm. they send out a letter um, explaining the process, and you can look it up online, um, Peg, on the town yeah, website. There's a delinquent tax yeah, policy. Callisvermont.gov. Right. All spelled out. So Vermont. if you look that up, that would help you. And it's you. town of Callis website, and you just click on delinquent tax collector or right. you know, there's a policy commission there. policies, ordinances, or whatever, and you'll find the delinquent tax policy. So the process starts as soon as their arrears, which is the last payment is due November 15th, right? right. And then- Right, the interest and penalties start to accrue. Once so they get sent over to the tax November. attorney, they send out a letter explaining to you the process. You have an opportunity at that point to pay up until the time of the tax sale. So you could even come in, or even after the tax sale, you have like, I think it's a year after the tax right. sale, to make it good to get the property back. But mm -hmm. it's very expensive. You know, once it goes to the tax attorney, the town's done. Mm -hmm. So you have to reimburse for attorney's fees and mm -hmm. penalties and interest, interest and all the court fees, whatever. And, and um, 
I mean, we hear that there's people that just go, you know, big investors that just go buy up places like that. So that's why. Well, they can do that, but they run the risk of it. The person simply paying off their debt, and they they, they lose title, it goes right. back. Right. So you have yes. a year, which, which they, is what you want if you're the right, person right. that has this happening. So to even if it went up for tax right. sale and someone bought it, mm -hmm. anyone see, bought it, you have well, the owner of record or heirs and assigns has the ability to purchase it back within that year. But any all the outstanding anybody tax. that's on a like a, has worked out a payment plan with a delinquent tax collector, mm -hmm. if it's a reasonable payment plan to get things caught up prior to the next year's taxes being due, we're we're very good about working with folks so that they can pay up what they owe and still keep their property. We don't want people to lose their property. So That's not what we want. Since this is on your agenda tonight, I imagine you have the numbers for what the delinquency is, Kurt, on the property right now? Is it on your, on, the, on that property? Yes. You printed the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. How much land is with that property ballpark? 40, 40 acres. Uh, 40 acres. Yeah. So if the town has the ability to sell just a portion of land to cover the outstanding mm -hmm. obligation. So it doesn't mean a house necessarily has mean? to. Okay. I mean, that's an option. It could be a, a couple acres. That's but again, right. so, but again, it, it, so you, do you want to know what the do you want to know what it is? Sure. Okay. Well, there's one there's one um, parcel that owes a dollar and eighty nine cents. So we're probably just going to abate that okay. at a future meeting. The other two amounts, um, and I don't. I guess this is. If you want the parcel numbers because you can always come in and look sure, things up. Sure. Yeah. The parcel number is one four zero zero two zero. And that one has a balance due of $32.41. And then the next one is parcel number 461240. And this is the one that owes $4,190.10. Okay. And just so you know, anyone can pay that bill. I'm not saying you right, should. Right. But right. If, this, if this way, if it was a priority, that right. if you, this process looked like it was going forward, you folks could pay the bill for someone else, your neighbor, yeah. and then there's no bill. Uh, there's no outstanding debt to the town. And but then you don't. You, there's also not a lot of recourse. Right, but right. then you don't. That's right. But then right. even if you pay it, if it ends up being somebody else's property, you're not going to get right. that money That's back. Right. Yeah. Well, right. Here's, right. here's the thing about something like that. For all we know, this is the way Pop wants it. We just don't have any. You know what I mean? Right. So right. right. We don't know. We don't yeah. think he's even aware of it. Right. Yeah. But no but but it. It seemed it, if he was aware and said, well, who paid my tax? You know, we, right. we just haven't been able to. What, when are the that. next year's taxes due? Well, they're uh, usually due on um, like mid August and then mid November. Is it, do you know if this is one year or two years taxes? I would probably say it's, one year. it's probably imagine. one year. You could call yeah. the office and speak with the delinquent tax but or while you're here, um, make an appointment. It says 2018. 20, it is 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the 2019 will be due in August. Right. So they're going to be going to be paid. So it'll, right. it'll double. That's why we try to get people off. on a plan so that they get get stuff paid off sure. before the next, because you're just going to keep falling yeah. further behind. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Hey, okay. I just emailed you a link to the Cal's oh, tax very much. policy, so you'll right. see that when you check your email next. Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, so I started to make a motion. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. It's no problem. That we um, not send the David Rogers parcel number 140020 and 461240. Not send them to tax sale at this time. Second. Okay, is there further discussion? And like I said, there's one parcel. That owes a dollar eighty nine cents, but that's most likely we'll get. We'll just debate that when we have a board of abatement meeting. Yeah, we don't even know. About that. Well, you can but come on. Lots like, of properties. So you can come in and look those parcels up and see where they are. I imagine okay. the four thousand dollar one is probably the major one you're thinking of. I yeah, think so. I mean, yeah. Judy told me about these three when I was here, but like this. Yeah. We're both trying to even figure out where the heck that one is with the dollar yeah. something. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Is there any further questions or discussion? Anybody? All set? Are you ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carrying none. Motion carries. So Thank it will not go to tax right now. You're welcome. You're welcome. And you'll stay in touch with us.
Yeah. yeah. And, and the tax collector. Yeah, it's really good. Right. right. Yeah, I would suggest that while Ken is here, um, that you might want to set up a time to meet with the delinquent tax collector. She would really appreciate it if you make an appointment. Okay, it just sure. makes yeah. it easier. Yeah. It's just here until the morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. just here all night? New Hampshire. Um, but, um, Telephone work. Just on, call her. Yeah, yeah just call her. Telephone's oh, really they, it depends no, on how she's fine with the phone. Yeah, yeah, she's fine with the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Closed yeah. on Fridays. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thursday they have a meeting. Yeah, is, is her number? I know I have this a phone. This is town. Oh, it's just right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And if she's busy, she'll call you back. She's very yeah. good. Yeah, okay. I had a great conversation Thanks, with her. You're welcome. Yeah. Yes, so yeah. everybody. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. Thanks. We wish you well. Yes. Yeah. We wish you well. Thanks. Yeah. We wish you well. Stay in touch. See you all again. Okay. Thanks for coming. Yeah. And thanks. I, very, very I know that you probably all had to stay late. Later than you normally do? Uh, oh, no. Not yet. Oh, not yet. Oh, no, it's not 10.30, is it? It's just getting warmed up here. It's not yet. We just, we, you know, we party after 10. So we'll, we'll be back. back. We'll be back. <laughs> Thanks. Bring the band with you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bring your own band. Okay, so we have that one done. Do, does anybody, I told, Sandra said she'd be on call if we wanted her on by phone. Does anybody have a reason they can think of? why we would want her on the phone now. She's laid out this document that she always does um, with what to send to tax sale. We try to um, probably go with her suggestions. And does everybody have this in, in color? Do so we know what we're talking about? Okay, you've got it all over. Thank you, Cliff. I don't think we need pages two through no. four right now. No. So we just said that we weren't going to pay, we were not going to turn over to tax sale numbers 20, um, 20, 20, and 21. So let's cross those off our list. Because if I don't, I'll get confused. Because the ones in orange. 20, 21, and 22. 19, 20, and 21, right? No. Yeah. 20, 21, and 22. No. no. 19. 20, 20, 20, 20. Oh. 19, 20, 21. Okay. So let's, I'm going to cross those off my list so I don't get confused. Um, and 21, you leave the duty? Unless there's something on the agenda that you'd like no. to do. No. Do you have anything that you would like to update us on before you go? Um, not off the top of my head, but I'll meet with you guys on Thursday. And okay. Then we can, okay. We can take it from there. Thank you for everything. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So the ones that we're looking at on this list, our parcels number is parcel number five, which if you look at your list. It's the orange ones, right? It's the orange ones. Mm -hmm. And then we have parcel 17, 18, 22, 23, and 25. Um, that the Zorco tax collector, the Blinko tax collector is recommending be sent to Gloria Rice for tax sale. Sandra sent a new list, I think it was today or something. Oh, it's, it's, in the, email. it's in the folder, right? It's in the folder. It's, right, it's yeah. right here. It's right here. This is the list, that, the most current list. Right. And we just said, see, we're 19, 19 slash 20. Right. We've taken that one off. 21 is the dollar 89. So we have 5, 17, 18, 22, 23 and 25 that we're looking at as parcels to send for tax sale. And I, I actually would just assume not even. No, I don't no think it matters. No, I don't think it matters. We've talked about it over and over. Right. These have, these have stayed in the orange. Right. There's been no. And there's nothing left to talk about. Right. There's no, they haven't made any arrangements or come up with a plan or come to the board. Or, I mean, it was good that Peg contacted us when she did. Sarah did this. Yeah. So what I'm looking for, if there's no other discussion, is a motion to yeah. send the properties recommended by the delinquent tax collector. Those are the ones blocked out in orange? Yes. Before Except we make that motion, I do have a question. Okay. When we had talked about abatement, mm -hmm. Jim informed us that we couldn't just do a blanket abatement, so that we had to individually... Right, and that's what we're going to do. And that's what we're going to do here. 
That's no, that's what we're going to do on August 12th when you're not going to be right, here because right. we have a board of abatement right. meeting. But I'm wondering if the same rules apply here that we can't just do a blanket turn them over to Rice. Do we have to I don't, go individually? Do we have to make a list? I don't, I don't no, so. parcel <laughs> because I think abatement is, abatement is a process and criteria that you consider. Ergo, you can't look at a block and, and assess mm -hmm. whether they meet criteria. criteria. Okay. Whereas this is just a process that is. So just to be clear. They all meet the criteria. <coughs> <coughs> I okay, with that? that. Yep. I just want to ask so, the, so the block of properties, because the ones that we just said we weren't going to send are in orange. So the block, the number that corresponds to the sheet from the delinquent tax collector is 5, 17, 18, 22, 23, and 25, just so we're clear in the minutes. So when the delinquent tax collector goes to see what we did, it's very clear that we're not doing 19, 20, and 19 and 20, which is, we're in orange as of today. Is this the most current one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the one she sent today. Um, she has a question here, 22. I know, I noticed that. They didn't say anything about that. I think that's the worst. So that, I guess, I'm making a motion. Do you need it? Do you need Is that Katie? your motion? Yeah, I do you need it. Katie to read it back? Mm -hmm. Do you need Katie? you want to read it back? Yep. The chair made a motion for parcels number 5, 17, 18, 22, 23, and 25, which had been recommended by the delinquent tax collector to be turned over to the attorney for tax sale. Is there, does that make sense to everybody? Parcels mm -hmm. as as, Ex as noted on the delinquent tax collector spreadsheet. Okay. Right. Date the delinquent tax spreadsheet dated seven twenty two nineteen. Seven twenty two. Yeah. Mm hmm. Everybody good with that? Did That's, you second mm -hmm. that? Did you second that? Sharon? Nobody seconded yet. <laughs> Does anybody want to second? We're just making sure everybody's clear on Nobody what we're talking to about. It. Everybody is everybody clear? We should all just count to three and second. Well, it's. Did we second that one to have a discussion? No, second I'll second it so we can discuss. Okay. I just was thinking aloud that parcel 17, like it's such a small amount to send to tax tell, then I realize the total uh, tax assessments are a very low amount to begin with. Right. It's not like that's a residual right. from a larger amount, so it must be a, a low value property. Mm -hmm. um, so that changes my thinking, but I, I was, if it were, Six thousand dollar assessment and all, but three hundred and change four hundred dollars say was paid. I would I would actually not support that one going. But this is no, neither, neither would I. But, that. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, neither so would just I. For but, clarification. Yeah. No, you're right. I wouldn't support it either. All right. Does anybody else have any comments or questions? Are you ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries, and we can get Sandra, the, uh, the delinquent tax collector, the minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would ask is is that the minutes reflect the point. Just we we wouldn't belabor it, but we've talked about this a lot. Right. So that somebody reading the minutes doesn't think we. I started this section with the group reference the spreadsheet that they have been reviewing for several weeks. Mm -hmm. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Several months. It's not just something actually, that makes us... You, might, you could actually look back in the minutes and say that we've been discussing this since whatever date the minutes are. Because you have... Several um, times. Several times. Right. And maybe... No thorough the minutes. and careful review. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the minutes you could put down, the, right, how, put down the dates that we talked about this. Mm -hmm. And review spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. Like just, minutes. Right, so if you can just go back and look at those other minutes and put that in there, that would be really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because this is, this is, like, this is part of the job that I don't like. We want people to know that we, we didn't just show up on the 22nd. Well, and, no. and just to be clear for our viewing audience, just because it, we're sending it uh, to the attorney, 
to begin the process of the tax sale. It doesn't mean these things will go to tax sale. Right, because oftentimes still steps. This can sometimes incent people to pay the bill. Figure out how to pay the bill. Well, oftentimes when it gets to this point where they get a letter from the attorney, they figure out a way to pay up, which is unfortunate because it just costs costs them more. Sure. And if they just work out a payment plan with the town. Yep. And we're pretty, I think we're, we're not heartless, so. Speak for yourself. <laughs> you just like to be, to your top. Okay, hey you guys, it's not even nine o'clock yet. Jerome holds Whoa. Yes, sir. Until we get traffic. Until we get traffic. Did you bring a snack? Oh, yes. <laughs> one other thing that I found um, that I didn't forward was it was um, Don Singleton who recommended or instituted the summer hours. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah, it was Don Singleton. I thought. Yeah, yeah. And it said um, because they work so long. In the uh, such long, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it said, since they bring their equipment to a job site and they're working, they could work those longer hours, four can days you send, a week. Can you send that? She did. Yeah, uh, no, that's the one I didn't oh, send. Didn't? Oh. Yeah, but I, right. but I sent the other one. I think, yeah. I think that would yeah. be yeah. yeah, Paul Hannon. Good to know. Yeah. Was and on then, the board then? Um, I don't know. Bob Withy was. I, oh. I don't know. Oh, I don't so, know. Yeah. so it goes even back. Yeah. 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 Before yeah. me. It goes back even before me. I yeah. don't know if we're in the same time frame or not. I think we are. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, um, but, anyways, that would be interesting to have because, you know, they don't have a life in the wintertime. Yeah. They're on call 24 yeah. 7. Mm -hmm. As yeah. you said, they can't even have a beer. That's mm -hmm. right. Because you never know when you're going to get called out. Mm -hmm. You just don't. They don't have a life. Yeah. So that's just something to take into yeah, consideration. But the the ones that I did send you were really interesting. You know, yeah, especially were, that traffic thing. Yeah. That you did you that know. really fast. I was really impressed. Oh, I didn't do it fast. It was on my computer. Oh. <laughs> See, I thought you were so so much stuff on my computer. Well, don't ever yeah. make sure it's back. Up. I know. I know it's not. Yeah, but yeah. I was like, when oh. I retire, I'm just going to give you my Dell. Here's my <laughs> Dell. We should. Put a hard drive to that and yeah. back it up. Bring it you should. next time, and I'll. Yeah. We can, or the town should buy you. A I can. I can drive. load stuff onto a hard drive while can we're, we get we're the meeting. Town? Can we, we get can, the town? Can I put on a thumb and stick it? Can you the tell town. this office staff what you need for a hard drive, and they can order one? Portable hard drive. Um. So yeah. So they can order one with the credit card from Staples or something. Uh, so you yeah, don't have Staples to do that. Oh, I can get. Well, it's it's yours is a Windows Dell. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Chris probably yeah, on it's not Apple. I'll, I'll just put it on mine, and then we can put it on a thumb drive, and then put it or transfer it to another. Okay. Computer. Are we all back to business now? Yes. Sir. They didn't have any snacks for us while we were waiting to change the battery. So, all right. So we owe you. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, so the sheriff is either going to come on the twelfth or the twenty-sixth. You're not going to be here on the twelfth. Did you? Were you planning to do it via? Skype or do you just want to be out of it? it might be easy. Take a break. Yeah, you're gonna be in California. Enough for fun. Don't yeah, come. I'll, I, I don't think I can do anything on the twelfth because I will be. At their I won't have access to. You'll the be internet. at their mercy, right? I won't have access to the internet. I will be. You're gonna be at mercy. Where are you going to Epstein's Island? Yes. <laughs> He's going to be held, being held hostage. An investigation. An investigation? <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I thought you were going to be held hostage. That <laughs> is probably more accurate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm still waiting to hear from Toby about contacting Tyler Brown about the Beaver Dam on Kent Hill Road. I don't have anything on that. Um, office phone system. The staff have been in touch with Consolidated, and then some other company, Rowdy, I guess, is now one of the old. So they've got Rowdy's on vacation. somebody else. We is have, that the one who's coming in on Thursday? Have a backup coming in on Wednesday. Wednesday um, this week. Who's yes? Who's going to do the next layer of analysis, and we'll have more to report after we meet with the office staff on Thursday and get another update from them. Right. But it really boils down to untangling and dealing with the junction up in the attic and dropping lines where we need them and then we'll have to decide we may take the DSL and dedicate it to a line 
so that we don't have to have a line that shares phone functionality with DSL functionality because that's one of the issues that's causing us a problem right now. And then, and once we get all this figured out, it's likely to cost us a little more too, right? Uh, yeah, but it'll be like a one-time, one-time thing type, yeah. type cost. So, okay, roof. I had originally contacted Andy, and he didn't get back in time for me to put him on the agenda tonight. So he's going to either meet with us at one of our staff meetings, or he's going to send me an email about the roof. It seems that the roof situation is not that easy. My concern is it's already July, then it's going to be August. We want to get this roof fixed this season, so we don't have to go through. Yeah. Ice buildups and stuff like that over the next winter. We started on this certainly, like we started on this in the spring, talking about this roof. But Andy's having trouble getting quotes because people are concerned when they. And as you said, you were here. Yeah, we spent probably an hour back there. He's yeah. concerned about people are concerned about when they rip off the roof to put on the new right. one, fixing the. Yeah. And so, so you know, you don't want well. It, you don't want a roofing company doing major carpentry. If there's a little patch or something, tree branch goes in, they can, but that's, you, they, they don't know how to bid on it because it, there's something that's much more complicated than a little mm -hmm. patch. So, and, and what I was suggesting to Andy, and I told him that I'd bring it to the select board, that we hire him. Uh, he's now working on my house, so I want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, so uh, he's not but we hire him to pull back the roofing, mm -hmm. strip it back, and he can seal up with weather shield or something you know, in between. Well, did he say when, he would have time after he's done with yours? Uh, wait, I need to run it past you. He thought that'd be a good idea. Then we know what we got underneath mm -hmm. right. and, and what needs to be done, and it may be better to have a carpenter come in. He also suggested that Green Line, since they're over there and those guys have the expertise, that maybe after they're done. we could have them just Fix it. Time and material, it you know we trust them. Mm -hmm. They've been good by us, and open it up and fix it. I mean, it's gonna there's gonna be a cost. So to it. right. So what do we need to do? We need to authorize Andy to take over on this. Project? Yeah, and and I would suggest that if Green Line had an interest in it at their standard rate, mm -hmm. that we, you know, allow well, allow them for time and material. Maybe we can mm -hmm. put a not to exceed number. So I guess um, until be... they come back and get so through to... authorization, you know, and work. So do you want me to put this on the agenda for the next? Mm -hmm. Do you want to put this on the agenda for the next meeting? Because we can't do it tonight because it's not really officially on the agenda other than an update. But I could put it on for the twelfth. Yeah. Maybe get Andy. Yeah. Get Andy to come yeah. in. Yeah. He's probably going to be busy at my place. Well, well, you can give him time off for dinner, right? <laughs> um. But if we're we should be prepared to make sure we have every piece of information we need on August twelfth to approve mm -hmm. prove mm -hmm. it. And make sure that Andy knows what is what the job is. Cool, and they, cool. we're good. You know, things right. are looking really good for this big, so that he can hit the ground running after yeah. they say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so we'd have to talk to Andy, explore it a little bit further. Right? Yeah, get some facts good. in front of us. And if we're going to do a not to exceed, we would need an idea of what that number should be. So well, we don't I just have to yeah. keep running mm -hmm. into the. It can't right. exceed five thousand. Otherwise, we have to go to. To bid. bid. So that's right. right. That's because that's the, the policy right now. It's, five it's our policy. But we Andy. Have. But no. But Andy's also. He's an employee. He's an employee. Right. So, so Andy's work is so fine. It's the if right. we brought Green Line in. Right. It couldn't exceed five thousand. Right. Just like the one we were trying to get bids on the roof. Mm -hmm. If they didn't exceed five thousand. Well, so, so if Andy wanted to open that up sooner right. than the 12th, that would be okay yeah. to get you know, it started. Because right? he's an employee, and we said we okay. would pay him for additional yeah. work. Most okay. of the stuff he does, he just gets his $50 a month. Yeah. But I would, like to, see him get, right, I would like to see him get paid for this yeah. project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, plus, I mean, with all due respect, you did write that we were going to talk about the roof. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not really authorizing expenditure of money. We're just yeah. Yeah. well, and Andy's yeah. an employee, so I think yeah. we're okay. Yeah, ask him to move forward. Are you yeah. going to be seeing him, John? Every day. Can you talk to my me? New, he's my new date. Joanne's been out of town for. Oh, all right. So, so can you? Keeps me company. Let him know. I will tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So just to be clear, he can, if he has time between now and the twelfth, he can open that roof up and explore. Right. Mm -hmm. And tell and, him to bill and, us by the hour. And, you know, yeah. And bill us by the hour. What his normal rate would be, mm -hmm. 
and uh, in the meantime, he should look to coordinate maybe a green line if they have the ability. I mean, I think he could ask them if they have that yeah. the ability to do right. that. I know right. that they're kind of hurt right. right now. Yeah, I know. Things are not as good right. as they could have been. I know. Um, but yeah, and then he can give us some idea maybe mm -hmm. what green line would charge. Mm -hmm. I just want I just wanted this to get done. It's been going uh, on. So do I. So it's do been we going all. on and on. Yes. So. All right. Thank you for being yeah, the messenger. Sure. Okay, don't for, I just want to remind you we have a BOA meeting on August 12th at 6 o'clock. What? What's, what Do are we, we have anything besides us? Battle um, of Arkansas concert. Battle oh. of Arkansas, yeah. Is, are we doing anything what? besides those ones and two? The rock band that you'll buy BOA. Um, yes, there was another one that either Sandra or Abatement. Judy sent yes. out. I'll find it and forward it. Or ask I them. probably have it. Um, right? Yeah, you, you yeah, should have 12. it. It's um, That's 6. It's I'll look for it. Yes, I forget the name. That's it's right. actually on the list of yeah. one of these ones here in white. Okay, on I'll, I'll find it just to know that there's yeah. one out there. Okay. okay. Um, 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 oh, Curtis Pond Greeter Grant Program hasn't been going as smoothly this year as it had last year. So um, Sandra and I are going to meet with Colleen and the two employees, the two greeters, the two kids, teenagers, um, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, just to kind of have a little chat so the communication is opened up. We need to come up with a better system for collection of timesheets, getting Colleen to sign off on the timesheets prior to them being paid. So just little things like that, it will be fine. Who's Colleen? Colleen Bloom, she's the one who's, um, who's doing the greeter grant program again this year. Okay. Um, at some point, we're going to need to talk about the conservation fund, the way it was initially set up in 89, 1989 compared to the way it's been operated. Jim's been um, involved, and he doesn't see this as a really huge issue. We need to fix maybe how we... Um, you get some clarification. Clarification, how we right. And it, and it may be that it can wait until town meeting next yeah. year, yeah. which would be great. It just needs to better clarification. There's all kinds of documents um, that the state has about conservation <clears throat> funds, and we're doing everything appropriately within those documents. It's just the wording of the article initially passed by the voters in 1989. Yeah. So and that, that was one of the minute searches that I sent. Yes, I saw that. Thank you. So we may need, for the purpose of it, Maybe it's oversimplifying it, but for, at least for housekeeping, just for clarification. Right. You warn something at town meeting next year. Or we, if we need, up. right, or if we need to, we would maybe, hopefully we won't need a special town meeting. Yeah. Um, as long as the funds aren't necessarily needed immediately. Yeah. And even if they are, Jim really doesn't see a whole lot of problems. Yeah, right. But we need to fix it. If we know something's wrong, we need to fix it. And we will. That's what we do. That's our MO, right? That's our, that's our job. Fix it, Charlie. Um, and there was something else I was going to update you on that I thought of before I left the house. Now, what the heck was it? Truck. Truck. Yes. Um, the never ending <laughs> truck. Sharon thought she was going to get out of here. Never that ending word, truck. I. No, such so luck. We just keep going around and around and around in circles on this yeah. truck. John had a visit from Alfred again today. Was it today? Yes. You yeah. have a lot of company. Well, oh, it's boring. Time. Joanne's away. The cat party, plays. Party Central, you know, that's mice why. Will play. Party Central. Cats away, the mice will play. So you want to give us... Cats away, the mice will play. You want to update, John? Um, well, um, I had sent... Uh, well, we, we all received the email from Toby. Toby saying that, that truck, the truck we had agreed was the right one to purchase and met. The white our one. needs. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't the white one. Was it white? Yeah. yeah. Whatever color. Yeah. The, one the, 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 the one with the, the, the heavy duty alternator and the lock. Extra gas tank. The, the, the larger fuel tank differential. and the differential locking, differential and the, all that, the wiring. Um, turns out we got scooped. So uh, that truck is no longer available to us. Um, Alfred came by to let me know that. He'd been in touch with Clark's, or they had reached out to him, and he's gonna he was gonna check in today and see what truck 
with a specification of the truck. Clark's has an inventory or will have an inventory soon. It are. Um, I had asked, and I'm just one member, so I don't have any authority, but I had asked that uh, Toby not go forward and purchase the other truck because they moved me. They said, this truck doesn't work. We shouldn't get this truck for all the following reasons. Sorry. We then explored and said, yeah, that makes sense. Right. No, this is the right thing to do, spend 5000 more, which now in hindsight, man, I really wish that we, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so now suddenly we're, oh, we're just going to buy this truck. That was inadequate. So I, don't, no. I, I can't it work like make any that. Sense. I can't yeah. work like that. I'm doesn't sorry. Make any sense. Not with a hundred thousand dollars spent. No. Well, and and especially when twice they brought a specific proposal. Mm -hmm. We talked about it over more than one meeting and then approved it. I'm not saying we need more than one meeting, <coughs> but here's the proposal. We approved it. Right. The third time you don't just say, yeah, we decided to buy the other one. Yeah, thank I, you. Well, I think we just I think we need to step back take, take take a breath. I feel take a breath and let's wait and see yeah. what the proposal my what I'm gonna suggest so that we don't have to talk about this every meeting with Albert and Toby is that John be the point of contact on this truck issue and when you feel it's ready to come to the board with a proposal, John. Does yeah. that work for you? Yeah. I don't see the sense of urgency, and I there can explore that with Alfred. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. And he that was truck, okay with that, right? Yeah, Alfred, he was very open. Um, but you know, I, that truck is still a pretty young truck. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know it. It's a little truck doing a lot of heavy truck work. Mm -hmm. But if all else fails, we have the backup truck. We're spending, in theory, that costs us money to have the thing sit there, mm -hmm. and. That's what it's there for, and I, you know, Alfred said, "Well, it'd be kind of a waste to run such a big truck for just for a little sand and salt." And I said, "Well, it's only for a temporary, a small right. window We're of saying, time." Right. We're not saying and, no forever. And so the Clark workup, if that turns out the truck, Clark truck is closer to what we need, should be getting, I should say, um, then that won't. It's looking like the time frame to get to complete the fitting up is not till January. So, beginning of the winter, that, right. which we and we approved that once, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's that's right. Did. Is that we the did. first one we approved? Yeah. But yeah. okay. well, we don't know if that's the same truck now. Who knows? But, right. Well, right. There's a lot in flux there. But There's, I, I, I guess I would interpret that when we approve one, and then they say, "Nah, we changed our minds about that one. Now we want this one." I would. We didn't talk about this explicitly, but I would interpret that as, res as res rescinding the approval on the previous one. Right. If they decided they didn't want that one. Right. And exactly. as we they, learn more, they told yeah. us why right. it wasn't good. Right. I mean, we obviously exactly. need to improve this process. <laughs> this is yeah. It's a little bit funny. The list gets longer. <laughs> well, and that's why I'm thinking. Let's take a step back. Mm -hmm. Let's get one person on board that really understands what the lingo that they're talking about, which is not me. John understands it. Um, and let them work running things by John, and then they can come to the full board with a proposal, which is technically what Toby should have done. Look at the clock. Oh. Is there a place the for Toby? One of the notes I made, truck? and I didn't want to bring it up and, um, and get us off track, but isn't there a role for Toby in the traffic calming in East Calais? Isn't there that could kind be. of roads and operations and there could be. Yes. I mean, it's brainy kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we pay a lot for that. So sure, I think that's a really good idea to get him involved in working with the state and how we can make this happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. I mean, being it's better than me. Well, it seems it's it's roads it's, and it's mm -hmm. it's community and it's right. It's a fit to me. It's a fit for that job. Yep, I think it's a perfect fit. And he has such a working relationship with, is it right. Shauna? Yeah, Clifford? he does. He has a great working relationship and with the V-Trans people. V-Trans and, and so. That is a good idea. I like that. So can, do we, will you just ask Toby to? Once we have the minutes. Yeah. I will share with him that the board, and we can reflect in the minutes tonight that we're going to ask Toby to help us work on um, traffic calming these cows. Well, how really help them, you know? Right. 
rather than us being the, well, we're going to look at the analysis, of course, and the approving it and the money and all that. Right. But, yeah, no, it works for me. Yeah, I think it makes sense. All right. Do you want to wait a few minutes next time? I couldn't I find those bloody minutes. All. I read them all today. I couldn't find them. That's just me. I, I was very busy working out there. on conservation yeah. fund and okay. <laughs> other stuff. So I, didn't get a, I looked at them, but I didn't get a good chance to review them. So I would appreciate it if you could wait. So I looked back. I couldn't find the minutes I was supposed to fix. I don't know what date they were. I, well, it had to do with a truck. I know, so I couldn't. So I went looking through minutes where we approved the expenditure of our truck. I couldn't. Find I actually minutes. made a language change where it said select board change here, but I think you were gonna. No, I. Think I was gonna clean it up, right? Yeah. No, I, all I did is clear is make mm -hmm. that authorization for the eighteen thousand trade in and the and the purchase clear. So mm -hmm. you know what minutes there. But you were going. I can find them for you. Okay, thanks. Uh, but you were gonna. You were going to put the meat about why this truck is better, why the white truck was better than the other truck. The black truck? Right. Than the black truck. Right. Why the right hand column was better. Okay. That was what you yeah. said. Is that Six, I just, I just, which date is it? No, actually, it was a different meeting. 620. I mean, this is, this is, this is, no, 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 no. This is the old, this is round one. Okay. You, this is you the were, first one. You okay. were last week or the week before. Okay. You mean it was prior to this one? No, after. After. So it would have been mm -hmm. seven, seven, eight. I didn't see anything. Or fifteen. Didn't we meet? Well, on the fifteenth, right, I think, is when I took the minutes. No, that's quick. Mm -hmm. Was that last week? Yeah, mm -hmm. that was last week. Oh, and I remember that I spelled I out like differential what and was all that. It might have been the eighth because I made some changes in on that one too. There we go. There it is. Rook where? Rook Commissioner. Oh, there it is. Purchase. Author of what? So it's July okay. 8th, John. July 8th. Okay, that's yeah. easy. Okay. okay. I've got the always in the current folder. So after each meeting, I move all the ones that haven't been approved up to so, next Oh, meeting. really? Yes, yeah, so you never have to come oh, out. Oh, okay. So everything you need to do is there so in that folder. folder. Thank you. Do you know how to do that? Yeah, I've got the current folder. Thanks okay. for holding my hand. <laughs> Appreciate it. And even I know how to edit them now. Oh my gosh, I'm going to look to you as well. Oh, that's, I, I that was another thought. mistake you made. That was a scary thought, right? <laughs> okay, is it old business, new business? Um, oh, I know, the memo to employees on town policies, the office staff, because there's so many more people than what, we, I think what I thought, um, they're going to mail it out tomorrow. And it's literally going in the mail. I think it should. No, that's fine. I just. That's I don't think it should be email. I think that's something that should arrive either with your paycheck no, or good. in your mail. Which with the paycheck, that's good. Actually. Right. Yeah. Could you say that one more time? The memo to employees regarding the changes in town policies mm -hmm. is going to be mailed out by the office staff. Mm -hmm. They offered to do it for me. Are you pending changes? Pending changes in mm -hmm. town policies. Okie doke. Anybody want to make a motion to leave? I'll make that motion to adjourn the select board meeting. Is there a second? The 22nd of July. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.